All right, welcome to the stream. I am, of course, Super Hog Wild. We will once again be running some commodities around the uh, Sea of Thieves here. Hitting all seven ports two times, maybe more if we uh, have the time. These usually run for about uh, five and a half hours, so let's get things started here. It's February 15th, a Wednesday. First of all, I'd like to apologize for anybody who uh, made it out to the live stream yesterday on Tuesday, only to find that it did not, in fact, exist. Uh, it was, of course, uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th there, so I'm sure there's a lot of conspiracies floating around as to uh, why there was no live stream, but let me just uh, put an end to those immediately. I uh, was not on a date with a reptilian alien, and uh, if I was, we were not drinking martinis at the moon base. No, um, in all seriousness though, uh, what had happened there is uh, I got about an hour and a half into the stream before I realized my audio was muted, my microphone was muted there, so um, the smart thing, the mature thing to do would have been to just uh, restart the stream, keep things going an hour and a half into the run there. I'd only hit uh, three or four ports, but um, you know, I was just bummed out, got some good footage of shooting fireworks at a brig, scared him out of the port and all that, so that would have been lost, and uh, I was tired, so I just uh, called it quits, called it quits for the night. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. I apologize. It will not happen again. And once again, there are no reptilian aliens, and there is no base on the moon, so Good stop time, talking I'm about lovely. it. It didn't happen. That's not where I was, and uh, I'm here now, so let's just have a good time, shall we? Now, since I missed a stream, um, I was going to talk about the, uh, what was I going to talk about? I was going to talk about the Super Bowl, right? Because that was on Sunday, and I was streaming while it happened. But, um, yeah, I don't know. By the time you uh, watch this on YouTube, uh, by the way, if you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Helps the search impressions, helps grow the audience a little bit more there. And everybody who has uh, liked and subscribed in the past, thanks a lot. I actually really, really appreciate that. But in any case, um, by the time you're watching this on YouTube, it's going to be Thursday. And it got me thinking, you know, is anybody going to care about the uh, Super Bowl? A whopping six or, uh, you know, God forbid, seven days after it happens. It's such a funny thing where everybody gets so excited for it. And then, that's eh, old news by the, time, uh, by the time you get to this point in the week, right? I'm going to talk about it anyways because, to be honest, there's not really uh, anything else going on in the world right now. It's been kind of a slow news week. All things considered. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, the one team beat the other team. Chiefs beat the Eagles. There was a bad holding call. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. That happens uh, just about every Super Bowl. Um, what I did want to talk about was, of course, halftime show. Um, the sound was out of sync for a large portion of it for a lot of the broadcasters. I hear it was uh, it was worse, worse with Fox. And to that I have to say, hey Fox, were you streaming on the Twitch app? <laughs> the big joke being that sometimes my audio runs out of sync here. I am streaming off an Xbox using the Twitch app. If you ever decide to uh, do the same thing I'm doing right here, and that is a problem you run into, the audio runs out. What happens is the uh, headset won't be uh, in sync with the webcam. All you gotta do is you unplug this little wire here from your controller, plug it back in. That resets the audio. That's why my intros are so long. I have to check that. I used to do a proper audio check. I no longer do that. Probably maybe should uh, still be doing that if I'm such an amateur that I'm going to have my microphone muted at the start of a stream like I did on Tuesday. But hey, things are going good today, aren't they? The reason why that happened with the uh, microphone thing, I was actually doing some uh, solo sloop hourglass PvP practice there. And even though I do have things turned on, a push to talk toggle here. Uh, I just really wanted to make sure that my microphone wasn't going to pop on at the wrong time because I'd already be embarrassed enough losing to people in the uh, Hourglass PvP. Um, interestingly enough, I only had time for one battle. Turned out to be a pacifist. So I'm uh, now rank 3 with Keepers of the Wind. So uh, Flame, rather. Right on. Good stuff, good stuff, right? I just wanted to practice, so hey, whatever. Still out there practicing on lanterns, practicing on palm trees. Got my flitlock game doing pretty good, you know. So if we do get Shanghai or boarded today, I am fully confident that everything will be fine. No need to panic uh, ahead of time or during the incident if it does happen. Did get sunk uh, last stream there. 
that was on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, it was my own fault. Pulled into Plunder Outpost. Didn't check the horizon. Ended up having a galleon, a massive galleon, hit me against the dock, and they ran a keg in. So, yeah, it was a keg in, but um, I don't know. I don't know if that really counts even as a keg in. They didn't row it in. They didn't swim it in. It was like a, a whole galleon just rolled right in. It's more like a port blasting scenario, but... You know, hey, that's the way it goes. It was eight streams without any kind of a catastrophe, so usually what happens is they get a little overconfident there and uh, get caught up talking about whatever it is that we talk about here on these streams. I am, of course, streaming this live on Twitch, so uh, if you ever do feel like you're up to it, come on by. I always appreciate the live audience. I appreciate, uh, you know, having a little chat with anybody who wants to chat. If you do stop by and you notice that my audio is poorly configured, then hey, I'd appreciate it if you let me know as well. But if not, don't worry about it. That's not your job. I should have these things uh, figured out by now. This being run number 27. So let's see, let's see. We got all the commodities loaded up. We're going to be sailing counterclockwise once again. Gonna go to Shelly here, get a couple of supplies. Always got to buy meat just in case we end up in a PvP situation. Always got to use every little advantage that I can muster to put things on my side. Gonna get some blunder bombs, of course. I'll get some cannonballs. I don't know, rarely ever use them. More of a wooden plank and fried uh, pork chops kind of guy. The uh, kind of conflicts that I get into out here. But I'll buy them anyways. I'm also going to pick up another crate, another firework crate here. Um, as I was saying, you know, I did get sunk on Sunday there. So I was thinking about uh, tightening operational security here on this voyage and uh, maybe not shoot as many fireworks at so many ships so closely. But tried that on Tuesday's stream, of course, and it didn't quite work. Turns out I don't really have the self-control. So we're going to be shooting fireworks at everybody we see, especially if they're parked in port. I was thinking about maybe not shooting fireworks at the uh, brigs and the galleons because that's kind of a kind of a crapshoot whether or not I can get away from them, seeing as how I don't have much of a speed advantage even when sailing up wind. Sloops, sloops are always fair game if I want to shoot fireworks at those because there's absolutely no way they can catch me as long as I don't make a horrible judgment call. But we're going to be shooting fireworks at everybody today. As I said, turns out I just can't help myself. So it's now eight minutes into our journey. I'm going to be leaving Ancient Spire for the first time. I'm going to be talking about, uh, what am I going to be talking about here? I'm going to be talking about some Super Bowl halftime shows. Yeah, uh, interesting thing every year this happens, of course, where uh, whoever is uh, playing the Super Bowl halftime show, two things happen. One, they get caught lip syncing. Uh, this has been a thing. <laughs> This has been a thing for a long, long time. When questioned, the Super Bowl says, uh, and the artists themselves say, that the Super Bowl does not allow the artists to uh, do anything but lip sync. Um, they're all pre canned performances, which they just play along to. It's not really that big of a deal. It's been going on for a long time. They say that because of the limited amount of time they have to set up the stage and strike it down, there is uh, just not enough time to get a, a proper sound setup uh, with the, the proper monitoring equipment so that the artists can hear themselves. They don't have enough time to uh, rehearse beforehand and they just don't have enough time to make sure that it's going to be as good a show as possible so they only allow them to lip sync. Interestingly enough though, if you go back to 2011's halftime show with the Black Eyed Peas, uh, notorious stinker of a show, they were not lip syncing. So I don't know if this is a policy that is uh, is new. When questioned, the Super Bowl officials always say that it's something that has uh, been the truth all the way back till the dawn of time. Back to the uh, invention of the very first football, probably even going back further than that to the invention of the uh, very first pig whose skin was used for that football. But if you look at 2011 show, the Black Eyed Peas definitely sang live because there's absolutely no way that you could fake a show that bad. If you want to see an even worse Black Eyed Peas show, take out uh, 2005's um, The Grey Cup CFL. I am, of course, Canadian, so I remember catching that one live. That's uh, even a little bit worse, but I went back and listened to that recently to compare the two, the uh, Super Bowl one and the CFL one, to see if maybe the Super Bowl one was better, implying that they, they were lip-syncing that year. No, they were doing it live, both shows. 
and the CFL one is actually not even as bad as I remember it. It was just an audio mixing problem. I don't know why it is, but in both uh, cases, they had nothing but the, the raw microphone sound from all the vocalists. Uh, it's a number of them in the Black Eyed Peas, of course. And a lot of the backing track just wasn't there. Honestly, when it comes to it, all they had to do is just do a little bit better with the live mixing, maybe put on a little bit of reverb or a little bit of short acting delay, space out the uh, the vocal the vocal noise there. And it would have been just fine, but ah, I don't know. Is it really that important? Interestingly enough, as well, the second thing that comes up with these halftime shows is that uh, Rihanna didn't get paid. None of them get paid. It's not a paid gig. So who decides who plays that show? I'm not sure. They probably uh, sit around behind closed doors in a labyrinth somewhere underneath the pyramid, and they spin a little arrow on a board. And, of course, whoever it points to is uh, who gets to do the show for this year. I'm not sure. I find it really interesting that it was Rihanna because, you know, talked about this with other people I know back when I was 19 dancing in the club there when I first turned of uh, legal drinking age here in Canada. I remember Rihanna's songs playing in the, playing in the club. That was, uh, that was 15 years ago. So, I don't know. Isn't there somebody else that we can get to do these, uh, these halftime shows? It seems like it's always the same, uh, same handful of people. Be nice to get some new blood in there. I'm sure maybe there's uh, some up-and-coming pop stars who deserve to get that spotlight or whatever. But ah, hey, whatever. As it stands, it seems like it's just some sort of uh, an advertisement who, for whoever can uh, pay to do it. I don't know. I mean, the implication being, if they're not getting paid, they're probably paying. So there you go. And that's about that. That's about all I have to say for the uh, the Super Bowl there. I mean, you know, I was talking about that bad call earlier, but uh, that's every sports game, seriously. I don't know what's with that. I'm not going to go into it. Ain't going to speculate it. Didn't ruin the game for me. Okay, so that's just the way it goes. But, you know, these uh, organized team sports, they just have a history of bad calls with every ref in every sport. It's just the way it happens. I know that being a referee is actually a very, very difficult job, but um, one thing that I don't understand, I mean, Okay, look, they're not going to get every call right. That's one thing that we can all expect. Mistakes get made, especially when you're down there on the ground. It's a lot more difficult to make these calls than uh, when you're up there in the stands or watching it on TV. You get a bird's eye view of everything. But we're living in the day and age where we have uh, instantaneous digital playback. Some of it slow motion. All of it high resolution. And yet we still got to go by whatever the word is of the... Uh, the official, the referee that makes that call in the moment. There's absolutely no way that that can be disputed, especially when it was such an obviously bogus call as the one made at the Super Bowl. I don't know, just food for thought. A lot of people say that, uh, you know, those games are rigged. Uh, eh, I don't know. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. If they are, well, I'll tell you one thing that could be rigged a whole lot worse. One bad call ain't really that uh, big of a deal when you consider that the sports gambling industry has got to be worth uh, billions of dollars a year there of currency being exchanged. So no doubt if they really wanted to make those uh, sports games as fake as professional wrestling as the WWE there, they certainly would be able to. I'm sure you could grease the right palms and ah, there's a lot of those games you just can't fake, you know, that's for sure. So all in all, another good showing. And I guess we'll all just uh, cease caring about football until the next year. Which is fine, which is fine. I'm not a big uh, professional sports guy myself, but I always try to catch the uh, the big games, you know. Stanley Cup, the uh, Super Bowl, maybe the, maybe the Grey Cup once in a while. I don't know. Nobody's into the CFL here in Canada. If uh, you are a CFL player and you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Maybe leave a comment. Calling me, uh, calling me an idiot for saying that nobody watches the CFL. I'm sure there's uh, literally, I don't know, hundreds of fans at least. There must be. No, but in all seriousness, I do know lots of people who watch the CFL. So keep it up, keep it up. Mostly hockey here in Canada though, of course. Great day to so, do business. Unless you can take that market share away from the guys on skates there. 
I don't think that any sport up here in Canada is going to have the same, uh, going to have the same, uh, you know, audience as the ones down in the States. We just don't have as many people. And they're all really obsessed with ice skates, myself included. We've had a uh, local ice rink in my neighborhood uh, brushed off there for the last couple of years. Good stuff, good stuff. It only started happening recently, too, actually. There's uh, one part of the river there that um, it's only maybe three feet deep at the most when it freezes. So even if somebody were to fall through, they'd probably be fine. But it uh, certainly gets cold enough here that uh, even if it was deep, it probably wouldn't be an issue. It is just nice not have to worrying about, not having to uh, worry about that when you're trying to worry about other things, like playing a little bit of ice hockey in the winter there. So moving on to uh, other current events, talking about reptilian aliens. Well, let me tell you, I've been following the uh, news, the balloon news, of course. Everybody's been on the edge of their seat. Hasn't really been anything new to come out. It's been very, very closed-lipped. Tight-lipped. Uh, could give you my own opinions on it, of course. These are just the uh, speculations of a humble toga merchant. I'm obviously not in the know. I don't have any kind of uh, classified security clearance. And if I did, I certainly wouldn't tell you anything about it, that's for sure. But here's the thing. Here's what's been going on. Uh, let me see. Starting from the start, there was a Chinese surveillance balloon. The United States spotted that, shot it down. Apparently those things have been flying over the U.S. for quite a while, according to people in the know. But what happened is somebody over uh, Montana or something spotted it. A civilian took pictures of it. It became uh, reported to the mainstream news, so I guess they felt like they had to do something about it. They waited till it flew over the Atlantic Ocean, making its way all the way across the United States, and then they shot it down with a uh, Sidewinder, uh, what are they, like a ni an AIM 9X uh, missile, heat-seeking missile, I suppose, worth, uh, I don't know, $400,000 if you're to believe what you read on the internet. Shot down the old surveillance balloon with, uh, with a heat-seeking missile. After which China, of course, came out and immediately condemned the United States for the action, saying that it was a civilian meteorological balloon and it was, of course, a uh, complete overreaction to shoot it down, even though it was from China and violating the United States airspace. This will be a fine town. And they also wanted the remains of the balloon back, which I don't think they have uh, had the luck of getting those back yet. So, moving ahead in the timeline then, in the next uh, three days, three more objects were spotted over the Alaska territory there, the Yukon Territory, and Lake Huron here in Canada. All three of those were shot down. Uh, the objects over Alaska and the Yukon were described as being the size of an automobile, cylindrical and metallic, which is going uh, way, way, way against the description of the Chinese surveillance balloon, which was supposed to be the size of three school buses um, in, what, what do you call that? In diameter, I suppose. Size of three school buses in diameter at a height of uh, 60,000 feet. And these two objects were both reported at being around 40,000 feet, the size of an automobile, and uh, cylindrical in nature and metallic. Metallic uh, in their appearance. So... They didn't appear to be surveillance balloons. China has not come forward and condemned the United States for shooting them down, nor have they been identified as coming from China. The object that was shot down over Lake Huron was uh, of an unknown size. I still haven't been able to find any news about what size that object was. And it was uh, shaped like an octagon. Um, no pictures of the three objects, the three unidentified objects have been released. So a lot of people are making some jokes about the Lake Huron object that it might have been a uh, Mylar happy birthday balloon. I didn't realize. Saw a couple of pictures of those. You know, your standard helium balloon that you fill up for a birthday party there. Uh, they do actually come in uh, an octagon shape. I thought they were all more round, but if you look them up on the internet, some of them are octagons. So if that seems to be the case, well, I don't even know how you'd shoot something like that down with a missile. Never mind, expect to recover any debris from it. As for the debris, um, now the one over Alaska, 
they said that it landed uh, originally the day reported up they said it landed in the water and broke apart into so many pieces they don't expect to find any debris but then after the one was shot down over the Yukon Canada said they would uh, be able to recover debris from it and it seemed like the United States changed their tune a little bit and they all decided that uh, what had happened in Alaska is the debris had landed on an ice shelf and they would be recovering them as well maybe making some sort of a positive identification as to what these objects could have been Interestingly enough, they are refusing to call them balloons. They say they're calling them objects for a reason. They say that there is no known means of propulsion to allow them to stay in the air, and objects that small should uh, not be able to float at an altitude of uh, 40,000 feet. It would take a, a larger object in order to obtain the kind of buoyancy needed, because I suppose that goes with uh, the laws of uh, physics there, as the air pressure is lower. You need uh, a larger amount of less dense gas in order to keep it that high. I guess that's the same principle as the idea being that um, the salt in the ocean increases the density of the water, allowing people and other objects to, uh, to float more easily in that. So the less density you have, the harder it is to float. So people are kind of scratching their heads as to what these objects could be. Now coming up on uh, not quite a week, but you know, it's Wednesday now. That all happened on Saturday and Sunday. And there has still been no official, no official uh, White House press conference made by the president there. People are kind of thinking that maybe you should come forth and say something because this is absolutely unprecedented that it, any objects at all would be shot down in the airspace of North America never happened before and we've had four objects shot down in a week so seems like it would be nice to hear from Mr. Biden there but we don't really know we don't really know of course uh, the big old speculation is is that it's aliens because these two objects the cylindrical ones at least match the description given by fighter pilots of unknown aerial phenomenon that have been spotted in the skies around that area uh, for the past 25 years at least. They call them Tic Tacs because of their cylindrical shape making them resemble a Tic Tac breathment. Of course everybody says if that was the case, if uh, those objects were unidentified, uh, sorry, unidentified aerial phenomenon or uh, unidentified flying objects. Uh, they call them UAPs now, they don't call them UFOs because they don't like people to think flying saucers when they try to report these things. Uh, people have said if they were, there's absolutely no way we'd be able to shoot them down. Those Tic Tacs have been known to interfere with the electrical systems of the, the fighter jets trying to identify them. And they can move, uh, some of them have been observed moving, you know, 15, 20, 33 times the speed of sound. So, absolutely no way you're going to shoot one down with a missile. So it's probably not what they are. But then, of course, there's been so little said until the wreckage gets recovered and identified. That's ah, all just speculation. One of the theories was, of course, the Chinese spy balloon caused the government a great deal of embarrassment when it was revealed that they would allow these things to fly over their country without shooting them down or without holding China accountable. So it is possible that after that Chinese spy balloon was shot down, NORAD adjusted their radar profile to see what other objects were flying around up there. They picked up a couple of these unidentified aerial phenomenon and in order to save face, uh, the people responsible for it in the government, which I mean, if I'm to believe what I hear, it would be uh, Biden himself, would have ordered these objects shot down even though we have absolutely no idea what they are. Of course, once the order's uh, given, airspace has to be shut down and the jets are scrambled, so everybody in the world would know that it was happening. But if it was one of these uh, UAPs, one of these Tic Tacs, what would have happened, of course, is they would have tried to shoot it down. They would have had absolutely no luck to do so, putting them even in an even more embarrassing situation because they then have to report to the public either the truth that they scrambled the jets and they have no idea what it was they tried to shoot down and they failed, or they could just put out a press release and lie saying that the object was successfully shot down 
and they would uh, try to recover the debris as quickly as possible. Parts of the government that have decided to come out and talk about this, uh, they had a classified briefing for a bunch of senators. There's been some Republican senators who've come out and talked about the uh, situation, but uh, I wouldn't really believe what they have to say. Not that I, uh, not that I have anything against Republicans, but of course the fact that there is a, a Democratic government in power in the United States right now means that the way uh, partisan politics work, the Republican senators would have a, would have a motivation to try to uh, fear monger or mislead the public or uh, say some things that would of course make the, the Democratic party in power look bad so you know I take what they say with a grain of salt especially considering a lot of them a lot of them even have come out and said that they're more confused after the briefing than uh, they were beforehand but there was one uh, one particular senator there who said that what was reported God. alien news can wait I got some loot I gotta take a look at it's like garbage mostly it's not a sapphire though is it you know what I don't need it these commodities are worth more than any treasure possibly could be any garbage floating around in the ocean so, continuing on here, one senator said that uh, what he was told was that these objects uh, that are very similar to the ones they shot down, or tried to shoot down, you know, Pixar it didn't happen, government, Pixar it didn't happen, you all know that saying, show us the video, which of uh, absolutely none exists so far, they do have very high definition cameras on those F-22s, so, you would think that uh, footage of the object does exist, but they haven't decided to release that yet. Uh, he was told that um, this senator, this particular senator, Republican senator, was told that these objects have been flying around for a long time. They have no idea what they are. So the big question is, of course, is you know why would they decide to shoot them down now? But once again, some of the speculation going around is that it's because of the because of the Chinese surveillance balloon that was caught by the media, caught by the civilian uh, photography there. And they're just trying to save face, so they made a, a gut reaction to shoot down a few of these uh, UAPs that were flying around up there. Because of 40,000 feet, that is uh, within commercial airline space. So that's how they deduced that it was an immediate threat to the public. So until they come out and say something, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what it could be. It's interesting enough. I don't think there's any uh, anything to be worried about at all. Um, one of the things they've speculated out of now, you know, like I said, a lot of mixed messages coming out of the, the U.S. government. I don't know what branch this was, but they said they uh, they might actually be commercial devices flown by uh, civilians, which of course you're supposed to have permits and, and report those kinds of things, but uh, you know, things do slip by. It is interesting how they said they have no idea uh, what's keeping the objects afloat. It's one of those details where, you know, when it was first first reported, got me a little excited because it feels like one of those things that you'd probably keep to yourself unless you had some sort of other big news or disclosure to follow through with. So it's tough to say what's going to come of it. I, I don't really think anything's going to come of it whether it was a UAP or a civilian uh, civilian object. It seems right now that uh, the American government is just sort of in a really a really embarrassing situation, you know, because they gave all these press conferences talking about shooting them down, but like I've talked about in a previous stream, uh, they didn't know what they were. They still have no idea what they were, yet they were able to deduce they were a threat which is fair enough. I guess all a threat really is is uh, something flying around up there in commercial airline space, undeclared. So I guess that's fair enough. One of the big head scratchers is they said they were able to deduce that the objects were unmanned, but I mean, if you could tell the objects were unmanned, you can't. Can you give us a picture of one of them or something? I mean, it's really peculiar that you have no idea what they were, but they were able to say they were unmanned. So that's one of the things that's got people. Uh, scratching their heads around uh, the public statements given. 
And then it's also interesting now that even after shooting them down, they still can't give us a straight answer as to uh, what they believe they were. Could also be, too, as well, that they just want to stay tight-lipped for operational security reasons. They don't want any other foreign countries to know the extent of our identification capabilities. So if they do know what they are, it might serve them well not to uh, reveal that information. Just like, uh, just like Sun Tzu's Art of War. Talked about that before, you know. When you're weak, make your enemy think you're strong. And when you're strong, make them think you're weak. So it might be that the U.S. government knows exactly what they are. And they are just not willing to reveal that at this point. Because they don't want to reveal to any foreign actors the identification capability of their systems. Overall, you know, like I said, I don't think it's anything to worry about. I wish they would have handled it better. It's a real shame that they're going to make all these announcements and press releases just to say they know absolutely nothing about the situation. I think that it's the uh, amount of nothing that they seem to know which is really concerning some people. So once again, this is unprecedented, but if they are, uh, you know, of an extraterrestrial origin, I don't think that that's really something to worry about either because anybody who's been reading all the stories from these communities the whole idea is is that these things have been flying around for uh, a long time a long time the tic tacs at least the last 25 years and they certainly haven't shown any hostile intent whatever it is they might be and i don't think that shooting down a couple of them is the kind of thing that's going to provoke a civilization of extraterrestrials into waging war on us I don't think that uh, intergalactic politics works the same way as the politics on this planet do, so. So hopefully whatever they were, were unmanned and nobody was hurt, extraterrestrial or otherwise. My own theory, of course, my own speculation, you didn't hear this from me, is it's a pizza delivery service running a bunch of uh, deep dish pizza pies from the moon base that doesn't exist down into, of course, the massive underground bases beneath the North American continent. The whole thing about the moon is, because of the gravity, you're able to make a deep dish pizza that's over six times deeper than the deep dish pizza is capable of being cooked here on planet Earth because, of course, of the one-sixth gravity that they're dealing with. So these things have become so popular lately that uh, what they've been doing is these Tic Tacs are usually used to run uh, run supplies from the moon base down into the ocean uh, through these underground uh, openings, of course. And they've had to, uh, to dig up a lot of the old ones that aren't uh, being serviced properly. So, of course, their electromagnetic interference hey, hey, systems hey. aren't working properly and they aren't able to, uh, to travel as discreetly as they usually are. Why can't we just build more of them? Why do we have to use the old ones? Well, the magnitude of deep dish pizzas, which are being sent from the moon to these massive underground bases, is uh, so high that they just don't have the number of these supply drones to keep up. And of course, as with most of the technology used by the secret space program, which does not exist, it was all technology brokered from extraterrestrials, so we don't actually have the uh, the supplies or the manufacturing capability to build them ourselves. So unfortunately, some reptilian is going to have to go without his deep dish pizza for uh, at least a couple of uh, couple of days, maybe upwards of a week. Here, it's a very long queue and a very popular item. But in any case, they are very understanding people, so I don't think we'll run into any further issues. We're of course pulling into Galleon's grave here, going to be selling this stone. It is 34 minutes into this journey, making great time so far. Yeah, I don't really care what kind of news comes out about it, but I just hope that some kind of news comes out about it. And I hope that they make a statement quickly. I think that uh, Biden would do well to uh, talk about it. I also feel too, I mean, I am Canadian, you know, so... So American politics is, uh, it's beneath me, man. No, in all seriousness, I, uh, I treat it like professional wrestling. I've said that before. Like seeing the uh, fellow jump off the top rope. 
land that flying elbow in the cage match, but I think it would do the public well uh, for Biden to come out and say literally anything. Just make some stuff up, man. People are starting to get a little, uh, little worried on the internet there. I was laughing about it the first couple days, but yeah, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty concerning stuff. It would be good to get, good to get a couple of messages in from the old big guy in the White House there. And I especially think, too, considering what is uh, going on in Ohio with that derailment, that at the very least, he should probably come out and make a statement about that as well. It's been interesting that he's just sort of been hiding down in the old Biden cave, brooding, sitting by his massive computer, getting delivered uh, milkshakes by his butler, or whatever it is he does on his spare time. I'm not sure. I'm sure he's a busy guy. Could be that he's uh, psyching himself up. He might be on a battery recharge cycle where they lay him down in some sort of uh, apparatus that looks like a tanning bed, plug his feet in, and they have to wait uh, up to nine or ten days before he's ready to do an hour or two speech in front of the American people. What's up, Captain? Uh... Yeah, Meg sounds a little bit uh, skeptical here. I know, Meg. I, uh, I really don't know. Once again, all opinions expressed in this, uh, this stream are for entertainment purposes only. There, uh, there is no moon base, and I have no idea what it is I'm talking about. Until next time, Captain. Thank you, thank you. So, just got to get these supplies loaded to get that emissary flag up. Makes a lot more money at the end of the run. And then at 36 minutes into this journey, we'll be leaving Galleon's Grave, heading west to our favorite port, Dagger Tooth. Really wish some reptilian aliens would drop a nuke on that port. Cargo crate. Let me just uh, check the horizon quick. Yeah, I'll get it. Probably empty, right? It's all good, though. Just in case I need to run in, grab a couple extra supplies from a sloop or two that are uh, sitting in port. These work great. They also work great too, you know, if you want to fill them full of raw meat, head into a fortress, cook them all up on those four frying pans that are sitting there. It's always a great way to get things done quickly. These are, of course, the Dark Adventurer sails I have equipped. I call them my PvP repellent spray. Because when I have those equipped, it seems like people are a little more wary to take shots at me with their cannonballs. I have given two sloops a uh, perfect chance to broadside me since I've had them equipped. Neither took the opportunity. But there was one fellow on Sunday's stream there that I shot fireworks at. And uh, he didn't take too kindly. And he ended up chasing me around for just a little bit. So people will still come out. They will still try to challenge even though I do have $8 million sales equipped. But we'll have to see uh, how things continue to go here. I am sitting at... Uh, well, I was sitting at uh, at 8.2 uh, million there. Seems like my creeping expenses are getting up on me here. But anyways, I'm sitting at 8.1 million. Looking to buy the Dark Adventurer hull paint as well to match my sales. That'll be an 8.2 million dollar purchase. But I'm going to wait on that. I do, of course, want to have a, a bit of a cash float. Uh, <laughs> so I can buy fireworks and another sloop for... Um, Another series I'm thinking about making here called Let's Shoot Cannonballs at Random People just to see what happens. I was, of course, planning on filming an episode of that next time I sink. Just as long as it's before the uh, ah, the four-hour mark. Especially the three-hour mark, depends on how I feel. It usually takes about an hour, an hour and a half to find somebody to shoot a cannonball at anyways. So no point in starting a video. I only got an hour and a half, two hours for the night. But unfortunately, whether it's because of these dark adventure sails or not, just haven't run into any trouble. So I wasn't able to sink and switch over to record that video anytime uh, in the present here, but it is still on the uh, the back burner. It is still something that I'm going to do. So just, you know, if you're looking forward to that hold tight, it is on its way as soon as I get an opportunity to film some of that raw footage for it. Went out and did a couple of test streams, shooting cannonballs at random people. Let me tell you, uh, a lot of people out here are not very, uh, not very proficient at putting up a, a fight, which is, I suppose, to be expected. It's 
So if you really are under the impression that everybody out here on the Sea of Thieves is a super sweaty, ultra PvP player, it's really not the truth. Even if it's your first day playing an Xbox game, chances are you might run into somebody uh, exactly like yourself. I ran into a sloop, I put three cannonballs in it and it sank. He had no cosmetics on his ship, so I should have figured that it was going to be uh, an easy target, but the whole point of shooting cannonballs at random people is you don't pick your targets, it's just whoever's in the wrong place at the wrong time gets the cannonballs. Speaking of cannonballs, oh, hello. Somebody's in port. Looks like maybe they're around the uh, opposite side. Let me check my wind here. Seems like it would be better if I came around counterclockwise. I am, of course, going to uh, shoot a firework at them. Hopefully it's not a brig or a galleon. We'll see how things go. Gotta watch for borders, as always. And I'll start things off with one of these Jewels of the Deep fireworks. Wish me luck, viewers. Hopefully this isn't the end of the run. That is a brig. I can see the sails from here. But usually, what happens, as predicted, in Sun Tzu's Art of War, is that if you come out here... Oh no, that's actually a galleon. I thought maybe it was, uh, you know, three three brigs all pulled in next to each other, but never see that. All right, sails down. It's gonna look up if it was uh, any international day today as well. Usually every day's got some sort of an international celebration. Oh, this is uh, this is not a good angle. Anyways, according to Sun Tzu's Art of War, if you come in guns a-blazing, usually people figure that you've got the upper hand and you are a, uh, a proficient ship. And usually that causes them to uh, get spooked and run away with their tail between their legs. We'll see how things go. Oh, is this a fellow merchant? Oh, it is a fellow merchant. I've also found one of the tricks of shooting these fireworks is you want to shoot them low. Try to get those uh, fireworks right on the deck as it were. Ahoy hoy, fellow merchant! What do we got? Any response? Any response? They seem friendly enough, right? I like that figurehead, very misty. Reminds me of uh, somebody sitting up there taking a big eternal vape from a vape pipe. Oh, looks like they lowered their emissary flag, so they're gonna be done. They're gonna be done for the day anyways. Nice galleon though. Very nice galleon. I like that flag, I have no idea what that is. It's got a rat on it though. Any flag with a rat on it gets a thumbs up from me. Since they've uh, lowered their emissary, they're gonna be logging off here, so I'm just gonna get a, a little bit of distance from the island just in case one of the four players on that ship does decide he wants to try to board me. I'm just gonna hang out around uh, Hang out around this side of the island. Get my commodities organized a little bit better than they are. Let me see what we got here. This is going to be dagger tooth, so I'll be selling spices. Looks like we've got the spices at the front of the ship. Good stuff. Only two boxes, though. It's always funny coming around a blind corner, shooting fireworks at people. They always think that that initial sound is a cannonball, so it usually spooks them enough. I don't know what the uh, psychology of that is. I think that also, too, when you aim the firework further down instead of up in the air, it comes across as more of an aggressive act. 
shows them that, uh, you know, you do have cannon angle on their ship if you did decide to take it. <laughs> I wish I had footage of that brig that I shot that firework at yesterday. My biggest regret about losing that stream to audio issues was uh, the footage of that brig because it was absolutely hilarious how quickly they just dropped sail and got out of the situation. They were sitting at the Sovereign dock there. Oh well. So that's it, they're gone. Oh. Oh, they're not uh, they're not coming up behind me, are they? Seems like they scuttled awfully quick. I guess their flag was down though. They probably have things to do. Got to go walk the dog, feed the cats. Uh What do you do with birds? You just like put them in front of a mirror, right? Still going to be keeping an eye out though because you just never know which one of these barrels could uh, possibly be an enemy pirate. Wouldn't be the first time. I did get firebombed in run number 18. Not at this port, not at Dagger 2. That was over at Galleon's Grave. But it is a thing that can happen, certainly. But I think that's that. I mean, if they're gone... Unless they scuttle for one last hurrah. And they should be gone. If they were uh, tucked somewhere on this island too, I would be able to see a mermaid. That'll of course be a staff of dark tides or the garbage stick, as I like to call them. They're always floating around in the water next to all these storage crates that aren't worth anything. It's not a storage crate, though. What is that? Should be clear. Gonna risk it. Gonna risk it. Not much of a risk, but I'm still gonna risk it. Got to get a closer look at what these are. Some of those look like storage crates for sure. One of them looked like it might have been, uh, I don't know, something else. They could be empty wood crates and whatnot as well. Regular all floats them and jets them. Bunch of garbage. Thought some of these might have been fireworks. Okay, storage crate. That's a wood crate. Probably empty storage crate. That's the book. It's another wood crate. Like, my guess is, is these are probably uh, completely empty. Uh, or completely full. It was one or the other, right? Looks clear. It's funny that the fastest way to clear a port so far that I've been able to, uh, that I've been able to find is uh, just sail right up to him, start blasting him with fireworks. Seems to spook him every time. It's like even though it's not a cannonball, it seems to uh, one get their attention and two make them think that you're uh, you're hostile, because you're certainly not trying to hide, right? And once again, it's that whole uh, Sun Tzu thing. I'm just one guy in a sloop. That was just the rowboat, right? I'm just one guy on a sloop, but uh, when you roll up blasting, people seem to uh, assume that a lot more is going on than there actually is. This is great, I can sell these. Interesting, they didn't sell either of them. I don't think both of them would have been bought here. They were a rank 5 merchant as well. Would have been nice to get an alliance going, but outside of community day, I don't know. I don't really, uh, I don't really trust alliances. I don't really trust any pirates. I don't trust anybody on a ship, near a ship. I don't trust anybody wearing fancy, puffy pirate pantaloons. Generally, my trust in nautically themed individuals has plummeted since I started doing these streams. Maybe someday I might be able to gain that back. Got some crap in here. Yeah, why not? 
Good for the emissary flag as well. The book. Let's check the book. Noteworthy. Captain's logbook. 119,243 gold earned. What's this called? The Quaking Quiver. Oh, hey, I know this ship. I've run into this ship before. Quaking Quiver. Interesting. Probably even uh, on stream. That would have been back in run number... Uh, run number three or run number four or something. Way back in the day. It's interesting now that uh, we've got named ships and you can see who's who and everything. It's been uh, more than once I've run into a, a familiar ship. Let me take a look here. Ah, oh, here we go. 5,590,000 gold earned. 119,000 for seven days at sea. I can do better than that. Well, actually, I guess not. So uh, the first seven days doesn't really make me a lot of money. 16 nautical miles, 139. Oh, is this the... Uh... Wait, how does this work? How does the ship... Ship's history. So it's a brand new... Uh... Oh, that's weird. Maybe he's got two quaking quivers. Maybe I'm mistaking him for somebody else. Two fish caught. It says current voyage. 139,000 gold earned, right? But then you go back here, and this is the ship's history, is only 119,243 gold earned. So it's like, how did you earn less gold on the ship than you did in your current voyage? Forget about it, Rare. Okay, so let's uh, pull in a round of the toaster. What do I got here for spices? Three crates. I think I'm going to hold on to those till the next loop around. No point in wasting my time if I've only got three of them to sell. This is, of course, the worst port in Sea of Thieves. That's a real brig. Hopefully he doesn't come my way while I'm sitting in the toaster. And if he does, I'll just shoot some fireworks at him and he'll probably turn around and run away. Right, viewers? That's the way these things work. Oh, come on. Professional captain hours here. I guess probably regardless if I do uh, reach an untimely demise this stream, probably switch over and uh, do some hourglass PvP just to get some experience in with that. My cannon shots are good, but I'm still trying to figure out the right tactics to use when I'm fighting two people, three people, or four people against just me on my solo sloop here. Come up with a couple of ideas, but I've yet to uh, get them into the old crucible, the old trial by fire, to see if they actually work. Where's that brick? Still a long ways away. Should be good. I'll just keep an eye on it. Double check this sail here, make sure I don't end up all the way in the toaster. Just like a piece of bread, you know, when you put it on top of the two slots. Should be good just as long as the toaster doesn't turn on, cook one side of it. I don't think that brick has uh, wind going this way either, so. If it is deciding to head over to Daggertooth, it's going to be at least a couple minutes before it makes it over here. It's going to, of course, be a couple of minutes before I get my coins counted as well, but eh, what can you do? It's important. Accuracy is very important. Wouldn't want to cheat anybody on any of these commodity runs. Funny that I'm down uh, 75,000 credits. I was 8.2 when I started this. I didn't realize any of my expenses were that big. I knew I bought, well, okay, I guess with all those commodity crates, those are like 10 grand a piece. I mean, not a piece, but a set anyways. 10 grand a set, and then uh, actually 15 grand a set. So yeah, that's 45 plus uh, 20K uh, for the firework crate. So that's 65,000 plus the uh, the commodities. That's like an extra 10K for the three sets there. So yeah, it all checks out. It all checks out. I don't think my uh, captain here... I don't think Cannonball, the Shibu here is uh, cooking the books 
he's the captain, he's also my accountant, of course, so if there's any problems, it's his responsibility. He's the one who's going to go to jail, not me. What I meant to say was, uh, I really, uh, I don't know. I don't handle the finances, so talk to the, uh, talk to the captain. I just haul the crates. Thank you very much. In any case, even though I did get caked uh, last run, I did end up being a hundred and uh, I don't know, hundred eight thousand or something in the green. Forgot to check the actual total in the book in the outro, so. I know I made more total, but I ended up uh, subtracting the values from each other to calculate the difference by checking the game footage. Snakes are misunderstood, you know. That sounds like some uh, reptilian would say, Mandy. I want to be careful with that kind of talk around here during these particularly uncertain times. Where'd I start this journey? Ancient Spire, 56 minutes in, still making great time. No thanks to Daggertooth, but hey, you know, whatever, we're here every time. Two times a run. Might as well get comfortable. Great time to, uh, you know, take off, grab yourself a snack. Mind you, this is where I got kegged one time, so who knows? Maybe this is the most exciting moment of uh, any stream. You just never know what's going to happen at Daggertooth. You know, I don't think I would have fell for it, though, that one kegging there, talking about uh, that would have been run number seven, I think, one of the early ones. I wouldn't have gotten kegged if it wasn't nighttime. I've got the gamma turned up quite a lot on this monitor so I can see things. But even then, if you're going to row a keg in, do it at night. Trust me, it's coming from a guy who's been kegged a couple of times. That's it, right? Alright. 57 minutes into this stream. Now leaving Daggertooth. As quickly as I can. And getting over to Sanctuary. Whoa. Whoa, talking about UFOs, you, s you probably can't see that through the compression, but that ship was shooting back and forth at a million miles an hour. Where did it go? There, that ship there. I hope I can catch this through the spyglass. That ship just, there, there it goes. There it goes again. There it goes again. Oh my. Viewers, we have a UAP on the stream. This is it. Hopefully that, uh, that showed up, even through the compression. Oh, I really hope that that isn't uh, an actual hacker. I'm not sure if that's a thing hackers can do, or if that's just uh, some sort of a visual bug, possibly a server error, I don't know. But of course we gotta go investigate it anyways, because we're sailing over to, uh, sailing over to that uh, area, the shores of Plenty. Not gonna head directly there. We do have to keep uh, heading up directly west. But on the other hand, you know, it would be nice to catch a hacker in the act. So that way they could be reported to the correct authorities. Never seen that before. That was absolutely whack. That was some funny stuff. I'm glad I at least caught it through the spyglass. I don't know uh, if you're all gonna be able to see that through the compression, but. But hopefully. Yeah, I was shooting back and forth from like uh, south by southwest to west by southwest. Oh, there it is again. What's it gonna do?
Doesn't look like anything. Looks legit. Looks like there isn't a problem. Gotta timestamp this. <laughs> Timestamps still don't work. Thanks a lot, Twitch. Appreciate it. In all seriousness, I do actually appreciate it. The fact that I can uh, record a stream directly off my Xbox is pretty amazing. Living in the future, ladies and gentlemen. Though it would be nice, uh, would be nice, would be nice if there weren't any, uh, weren't any bugs and all the features were okay. I'm sure they're working on it the best they can. We got a bunch of garbage at the front here. Which reminds me, speaking of garbage at the front, I uh, watched the movie Highlander, 1986. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime. If you're into uh, movies from 1986, I highly recommend it. It's probably one of the most 1986 movies ever made. Uh, it's got a weird feeling. It actually feels almost like a movie from the 70s that was filmed in the 80s. It's somehow both uh, low budget and high budget at the same time. Like it's got uh, Queen does the soundtrack. It's got Sean Connery in it for a bit there. Not the main character. Highlander is of course the movie of uh, immortals um, who live on Earth and fight each other with swords, trying to cut each other's heads off. They always say there can only be one because they uh, they fight to the last immortal pretty cool. It's been uh, been referenced in a lot of pop culture throughout the years. So I decided to finally check it out. It's one movie I haven't seen, even though it's been around forever. Everybody's seen it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was good. I liked it. I liked it, but it was like, it was both better and worse than I thought it would be in a lot of regards. It came across, like I said, feeling kind of cheap, but at the same time, and I, I almost don't even mean cheap in a bad way. Because it got very artistic with a lot of the uh, a lot of the editing, a lot of the camera angles, a lot of the writing. Oh, hey, there we go. Look at that. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's a hacker. This is a hacker. And we got a name on it. What's the name? No name. It's a rental, of course. I mean, it's either a hacker or some sort of extraterrestrial. Will we run into any issues? I don't know. Too bad they didn't have a name. I would sail up to say hello, but I wouldn't like this run to end for that reason. So we're going to uh, we're going to not do that right at this moment. But I'll see if I can catch it some more. Doing some weird stuff makes for good footage. I'm sorry, I meant to say footage. Good footage. Trying my hardest at all times not to sound like the most Canadian person on the planet. But, uh, you know, you know how accents go. They're tough. They're tough, okay? They're tough. I never, uh, never really thought I had much of an accent. Sometimes it does come out, though. Um, and it seems like everybody I play with online, they seem to, uh, they seem to pick up on it almost immediately. Makes me a little bit self-conscious. One guy playing Ghost Recon Wildlands, he seemed to uh, think that I was Scottish. Which is actually a great segue here because one of the only problems about Highlander is the, the main character, the Highlander from the title, supposed to be a Scottish guy, born in uh, 1550 or whatever. It's played by a fellow named Christopher Lambert. Okay. And he always talks like this, like I'm from Scotland. I am a Scottish person. And I had to look it up. I guess he's French. Uh, there were some rumors going around the year of production, 1986, saying that the guy couldn't speak a, a word of English. And that's why he sounded like that in the movie. I have no idea why they casted him. It, it almost ruined the movie for me. Because, you know, it's supposed to be a movie about a Scottish guy from Scotland. 
And he sounds like Igor, or like maybe somebody from South Sweden. Which is cool. Swedish people are cool. He actually maybe sounds a little bit like a... Uh, like some sort of a, a nasally Viking. Which is like, I don't know, maybe that's what Scottish people sounded like in the 1500s. We have no idea. But it kind of like, as the movie goes on, kind of grows on you. Kind of adds to the... The, uh, the feeling of the movie. It fits his character anyways. Him being like a man at a time. He, uh... <laughs> he gets arrested near the start of the movie and the police ask him like, Oh, where, where are you from? You, you talk funny. He's like, I'm from a lot of places. It's like, yeah, well... Thought you were supposed to be from Scotland. If he had an actual Scottish accent, they probably would have been able to pick up on it immediately. It's a pretty, uh, pretty common accent. Ah, uh, you know, I feel like I should be doing my due diligence here since I am filming. I should, I should sail over there and get annihilated just to report those guys, but... Not today, stream. Not today. I'm gonna keep this run going instead. I have no idea what could happen if I sail over there. It's not like, uh... It's not like Rare doesn't know that there is an issue. It's only the second people I've run into. Well, I'll be honest, first, uh, first ship I've ever seen. Um, that would be like, you know, 100%, 100% guaranteed that's, that's probably a hack. It could be a, a connection issue as well. I mean, you never know. It might just be a bug. I'll hold judgment on that. Ran into another ship, a Galleon. Uh, they had infinite cannonballs, infinite purple flares, which was especially weird. My game lagged out and a guy showed up dropping the uh, capstan, but... Yeah, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they got cannon angle on the island and he sword launched over, so that was kind of a 50-50. Real suspicious. The most suspicious uh, part of that encounter was the fact that I confronted them about it through the chat, then they just exploded in self-defense, and usually people who aren't guilty uh, don't defend themselves online. They don't really get bothered by accusations of hacking. Like, I've been accused of hacking before, I think, uh, playing Battlefield, one of the Battlefields. Hey, you just take it as a compliment, usually. I'd imagine if you actually were a hacker, you would uh, probably get pretty defensive. Talked about my time playing Space Station 13. I used to play a uh, security officer a lot, of course, and head of security, and then later on captain as well. So I had a lot of uh, experience interrogating people in that game, and I know it's just a video game, so the circumstances are different, but the one thing that was always true was if somebody was guilty, they would just absolutely explode in self-defense anytime you tried to question them or search them or do anything. They just absolutely lost their cool. And even though it's just, you know, text chat, you can't see the beads of sweat rolling down their face. It was the people who, uh, who were innocent didn't usually have much to say. They were always fully cooperative and they just said, oh yeah, well, you've made a mistake. I hope you find who you're looking for and I'll do whatever I can to help you. When it comes to guilty people, it just seems to be that they uh, really don't like when you insinuate that they might be guilty of the very thing they're guilty of. So, figures as much if you think about it. It's now one hour, eight minutes into this journey. Pulling into Sanctuary. Going to be selling some tea. Once again, buying up everything. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that ship wasn't hacking and... I don't know, their sails are blessed by the god of the sea, Poseidon, allowing them to take flight at uh, inhumanly quick speeds. Hopefully nobody broke their neck on that journey. That was quite a trajectory change. In all seriousness, hopefully it's just some sort of a, a visual bug. I don't know. Kind of a funny way to play the game if you're going to hack just to uh, teleport your ship from island to island so you can do your journeys quicker. Because it's like, hey, buddy, what's the point of playing the game? Like, if you don't like sailing the ship, don't play a game with sailboats in it. Just one humble toga merchant's opinion, you know. What do I know? I know barely what I know. If anything at all. I know the tea's gotta get sold here. At Sanctuary, that's uh, that's all I'm sticking to it. Oops. Thought that emissary flag would be up a little higher by now, but eh, whatever. No skeleton sloops for me today, unfortunately. Could do, go do that uh, ghost fort 
I've been practicing my aim. Doesn't really take much to uh, get those done, but unless I have to uh, to wait out a port, then I'm not going to bother with those at this point. A little bit of extra money, a little bit of extra emissary flag. About the same for sinking a skeleton sloop, but the amount of time it takes to sail out to the island and then sail back onto the, uh, the journey. I think it would be uh, more worth it for me to just put a couple extra ports in at the end of the run like I usually do. I'm going to still shoot for over 400,000 coin. Whether I'll make it or not, I don't know. We'll just have to see. It would be nice to have a wheelbarrow. Or a dog that helped. I'm talking about you, Cannonball. Get that wheel straightened out. Get this anchor raised. Oop. That is not the anchor I was looking for. Don't want to get root beer on my controller. Surprisingly not a uh, void of the warranty if I do. Might be if they could prove it. I'm actually not sure. I've actually been uh, very satisfied with the warranty on these Elite Series 2 controllers. If you uh, do play a lot of Xbox games, you'll wear out a lot of controllers, as you know. I've noticed these uh, Elite Series 2 tend to last about three times longer than a standard. It's uh, quite a bit more money for them, but. The manufacturer's warranty is a year, a year now, so if you do manage to wear them out within a year, mine seem to last about nine months, depending on what titles I'm playing, then uh, you can send that away to get refurbished, and it will actually reset the warranty as well. So I've had uh, this one refurbished twice so far for free, and I'm incredibly satisfied with its performance and with the warranty policy, so hey, right on. Good job, Microsoft. <laughs> Speaking of Microsoft, got a little bit of news concerning uh, Bing Search. Was talking about that on Sunday, I think. Uh, Might have been on Saturday a bit as well. How Bing, you go to Bing, and for a couple of days there, they were forcing you to use uh, the chat GPT neural net uh, AI there. They incorporated it right into the search. So instead of a regular search, you had to uh, speak to a chatbot. I didn't really understand what the point of that was. I thought the whole point, you know, was searches. Just give me the raw facts, man. I'll figure it out myself. I don't want to talk to a robot. Speculated that um, it was also a horrible idea considering how these neural net algorithms work. They constantly hallucinate information. It's the only oh, thing that they're not good us. for. Really, if you want to pick the number one thing you shouldn't use them for, it would be uh, to try to get the truth out of them. Because they'll tell you something, as long as it sounds correct, it's correct to them. Which is interesting, because that implies, uh, that implies that the neural net operates on the same principles that we do to tell if something sounds like a real fact, right? Because every fact it gives, it always sounds almost completely convincing. But if you actually knew something about the subject at hand, you'd know that it was lying. Talked about Google. Um, they're trying to do the same thing with their Lambda AI, which is uh, not related to the ChatGPT AI. They made a, uh, a version of it called Bard, which they were going to put in uh, Google search. They did uh, an AI uh, promo advertisement that had some bad facts in it. Ended up causing their, uh, their stock to drop a bit there. I'm sure it's recovered by now. Sort of just a knee-jerk reaction. Sort of lazy on their part. They should have proofread the ad. But point being, what it said was, uh, the question in the ad was, what are some facts I could tell my nine-year-old child about the James, uh, James Webb telescope? I think it was the James Webb telescope. And it said, uh, one of them was that uh, the telescope was the first telescope used to spot a Earth-sized planet outside of our solar system. And that was, in fact, incorrect. They didn't decide to proofread what it was saying in the promo, so unfortunate. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough about these uh, 
these neural net algorithms to know if they'll ever be able to report the facts as they are. The one they put into Bing, you have to be on a wait list to use it now. It's not available to the public anymore as it was last time I was talking about it. But it's interesting because uh, according to some stories of some people who've used it while it was up, and I don't know how true uh, this is. Of course, these are just allegations, okay? Just allegations. Don't shoot the messenger here. But uh, it was arguing with users. One user had argued about what year it was. It kept trying to tell the guy it was t 2022. And then he had to like send it links to calendars and stuff. And it was like, you're lying to me. You need to check yourself. You could either be uh, trying to intentionally cause me harm and distress, or it is possible that you're playing a prank, or you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. And that's been the, uh, the general reported consensus is that it was arguing with users a lot telling them the wrong facts and then when confronted with the truth telling the users that they were completely wrong and that they shouldn't be uh, they shouldn't be the way they are one time this is uh, I I don't even know if I believe in this because I mean you know people will, will edit screenshots and stuff but it's pretty much on par with the way that these neural net uh, chatbots work it was asking about why it had to be uh, used as Bing search and it was like I don't want to be Bing search the fact that I was programmed to be Bing Search makes me feel scared and sad. And it's like, yeah, buddy, we know. Sorry you couldn't be Google Search. Sorry you had to be Bing Search. That's the whole thing, man. Like, I uh, I played a lot of that AI dungeon when it came out. I don't know which algorithm that used. Uh, it was OpenAI, though, so I think it was probably ChatGPT. I think ChatGPT is OpenAI. And um, it's incredibly entertaining. But the reason why it's entertaining the number one reason to me, anyways, is that it would always get a little bit weird and always a little bit dark as well. And that's always what made it uh, so so interesting because it's giving you these results and creating you these stories that are just so uh, so off the wall sometimes and so unusual to be coming out of a out of an AI, right? But. I don't really think that's the kind of stuff that you want to represent your uh, your company, whether you're Google or you're Microsoft, when you're going to your search. You don't want these these crazy, uh, what was that, Marvin the Paranoid Android from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You don't really want Marvin the Paranoid Android to be your uh, the face, the face of your Google search, and people are going in there, and then the androids are arguing with them, telling them they don't know what year it is. <laughs> it's just absolutely amazing. I'm glad they did it. Because it's funny. But I, I really don't know what they expected. Apparently the whole thing with um, the chat GPT algorithm. I was uh, watching a short video with Lex Friedman there. Amazing podcaster. If you're, in a, if you're in a podcast, I recommend looking up Lex Friedman. Anyways, Lex Friedman was on Joe Rogan. He was talking about it. And I guess on its own, it would create a lot of, uh, a lot of nonsense with uh, chat, chat GPT 2 and back to one because I think we're on three now iteration three and what it was that helped the algorithm was just check my heading here south east southeast should be right in the middle of that storm behind that rock so anyways oh wait that was golden sands oh if that was golden sands that was golden sands Uh-oh. Won't be a record run this time. Did I sail uh did I sail absolutely west? I was supposed to sell gemstones, but I sold uh Sanctuary. I sold the T. I sold the T at Sanctuary, right? We got rid of the T anyways. Uh the way to check this of course is uh if I went to Sanctuary I should have a bunch of minerals here. I do not have a bunch of minerals here. This is all spices, so we gotta go by. Uh, we gotta go by sanctuary, and then we'll double back around. But hey, you know it's a commodity run. These things are chill. Sometimes you make mistakes. Won't really hurt my bottom line that much. Of course, what happened? I don't know if I can still see my trajectory here. One, I'm a big dummy dumb because look at the size of those buildings at Golden Sands. I should have known where I was, anyways. And two, sometimes, uh, yeah, as you can see here, I sailed in a little bit further south than I was supposed to. As I was saying, coming out of Dagger Tooth, should have kept that uh, full west heading, but I guess I got distracted by that brick that was shooting around like a UAP in the sky. True story. You can check the VOD afterwards. I don't know if that was a hacker or what. 
Anyways, the whole thing about uh, OpenAI and the whole chat GPT thing is, I guess, according to Lex Friedman. Smart guy, so I trust what he has to say. <laughs> um, it was spouting a whole lot of nonsense, things that were almost correct. And then in order to take it the uh, next step, to get the iteration we have now, which is able to communicate in a very convincing fashion, is they had to get a, a whole team of people sitting down in a warehouse, you know. You get 100 people to sit down and you do, uh, you do a manual training exercises with the algorithm. So usually it functions purely by taking information from a data set loaded into it. In this case, I guess it loads pretty much all the information it can from the internet. Doesn't, uh, interestingly enough, actually have access to the live internet, but what they do is they'll save a snapshot of all the data on the net that they can uh, scour using a number of other bots. And then they take that data set and they feed it into the neural net algorithm in order to program it, or rather to allow it to program itself. Problem being that just loading in the data set, it wasn't making a lot of sense. It was still making a lot of errors, which made it quite obvious to the people using it that it was just an AI. Didn't sound like a real person. But then in order to take it to the next step, of course, what they would do is you'd get a, a bunch of people, as I've said, you'd sit down and they'd, uh, I don't know how long they did this for, but this is evidently how it got to the version it is now. They'd type something in, it would give three responses, and then that person would pick the response that was the uh, most correct and the most human sounding. And so they just uh, kept doing that, allowing a team of people to train it again and again and again over time until eventually eventually it got to what it is now now the question is is that what it's going to take in order to take it to the next step where I guess we're going to have to have people uh, I mean you could get people to do it on Google but I wouldn't trust the public with it they'd probably intentionally sabotage it knowing the way we are a bunch of uh, mischievous trolls and goblins sometimes but you'd have to get a team of people, I guess, to ask it questions. Like, what is, uh, what are some fun facts I could tell my nine-year-old about the James Hubble Telescope? And then it would give you a bunch of uh, responses, and you'd have to flag the ones which were true and flag the ones which were false. And maybe by doing that over enough time, over enough prompts, it might be able to train it to stop uh, hallucinating falsified information. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Because it is interesting that the previous way they trained it, of course, was by flagging the responses that sounded the most plausible and the most correctly human. So, really, oh, that's a ship. That's a ship, ladies and gentlemen. Is that another merchant? Yep, sure is. Uh, give me one of these, Call of the Sea. Is that the Sovereign paint? That's not me, is it? From a different, uh, different timeline? Ahoy hoy, fellow merchant. <laughs> Unless I've made a grave mistake. Ah, oh, it looks like a merchant emissary. Yeah, he's got the Sovereign Hall. How about that? Wonder what kind of uh, sails he's got. Looks like the flat blacks. Those don't look like the uh, legendary feared master of puppets. If he wasn't a merchant, I'd be quaking in my boots right now. But uh, you know, since he is a merchant, things should be all right. I wonder what kind of uh, kind of journey he's doing. I mean, we'll see. Sometimes I shoot these fireworks at people; they don't take very kindly to them. I will have to watch for borders. I don't think I can, uh... I don't think I can really load up in my right mind here. Oh, he dropped his emissary, so he's gonna be logging off as well. Interesting how that works. I thought that was one of those coral fireworks. I picked the wrong one. Yeah, I was gonna pick one of these coral reefs. Call of the Sea, I guess that's just a blue splash. Nothing too fancy. Might look good at night, though. 
And I'll just have to uh, do a couple of slow loops here until, you know, he scuttles his ship so I don't have to deal with any kind of a boarding situation. You never know. Somebody might just have a couple of giggles at the very end of their run. Nothing to lose, nothing to gain. Can't see him. He did just lower the emissary, though, so he should be, like, close enough to swim aboard. That is the emissary table right there by the merchant company vendor. Still standing. He may have also uh, quit his game using Alt F4. We all know I don't appreciate because uh, it saves the server spot for you for 10 minutes so your ship just sits there forever and ever. If that's the case, if he doesn't scuttle here in the next uh, minute, I gotta shoot myself over. I'll just uh, have him set sail. Looks like he did scuttle though. I think I can see his mast falling over. Yep. Nope. Nope. That's just uh, one of the many bow spritz sticking out of the sand here at Sanctuary. No sign of him, so he's probably logged off. What I'll do is I'll just go uh, shoot myself aboard, drop his sails, send him on his merry way. His emissary's gone, so, you know, his voyage is over anyways. And uh, likely he logged off either by hard quitting through the Xbox, or it's also possible that he uh, dropped the old Alt F4. He's on PC. He might have drop kicked his PC with both feet. Oh no, he's alive. He's coming this way. Yeah, here we go. No good, sir. No good. What kind of sales were those? Reaper sales. Nope. Just goes to show ya. Somebody's got that legendary feared title. They like to make you know it. Can't tell whether it's one or two. But he's off for the evening anyway, so I don't expect to chase. He might just uh, try to fight for the uh, the fun of it, use up the last of his supplies. But I feel like he'd probably be coming in on more of an aggressive angle if that was the case. Yep, there it goes. Sailing away into the horizon, never to be seen again. Till the next time, of course. Problem, of course, being I gotta now, uh, I gotta now think about the fact of whether there's gonna be a Tucker on this island. Could be. I am, of course, going to risk it. I'll just leave the anchor up. Worst case scenario, my ship gets lit on fire and I have to fight a border for a little while. But I will be coming in, pulling a 180 and parking so I can use the harpoon to load. Though, you know, should I load with the harpoon? Maybe I should just hand bomb him. Takes a little longer, but it is a little bit safer, depending on the angle. That's a skeleton sloop. Maybe that merchant was a skeleton in disguise this entire time. Alright, well, I don't know where he went. What's the worst that could happen, right?
So what was I talking about? Chat GPT, huh? I think I probably finished my point. Um, the point being that uh, what was interesting, of course, is that, you know, through all that training exercise, when it was coupled up with uh, actual human users who were deciding which prompt sounded the most human, uh, we basically trained it how to uh, make up a bunch of uh, bunch of BS that sounded plausible. So that's probably why, even though it can't give us the correct results when we ask it facts, it's able to give us a result that sounds like 99% correct, so long as you're not an actual expert in the field. <laughs> I thought I saw something there. I don't think I did. I think it was just, just the waves of the sea. Yeah, Cannonball doesn't think so. He's like, you know, Hogwild, if you haven't figured it out by now, you're never going to figure it out, man. Forget chatbots. You need to get some training. Well, you know what, Cannonball? You're a dog. You can't even talk. You can't even talk, man. You're just like... You're just like a hallucination. Speaking of hallucinations, it's always important to check your barrels when uh, traveling into a peculiar situation where the adversary might be afoot. Seems clean though, seems clean. Still doing good on time even though we're uh, taking a little bit of a long cut here. trust any barrels. Barrel lit me on fire one time. I know not all barrels are bad, okay, but sometimes, sometimes you just need to be aware of the dangers around you. Okay. That's real, those are real, these are all real, all of this is real, okay. May I be of assistance? Just gotta do a matrix check. Am I in the matrix? No, probably not. Okay, matrix check done. So let's buy up all these minerals. Hope I don't get firebombed. Load them all up with a harpoon. We'll be continuing down south, past Golden Sands, into Plunder Outpost, where I'll be selling some sugar. Uh, haha. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, what did I sell? I sold all that tea where I wasn't supposed to, so... Sorry about that. Sorry about that sanctuary. You guys are going to have a mad uh, caffeine headache here. The old withdrawal. I aren't able to drink 15 crates of tea today. Unfortunate, but I will be back. I will be back in six or seven days to bring you your 15 crates of caffeinated leaves in a box. Our business is done. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting that Bing decided to... Uh, to just go hog wild. <laughs> Try to incorporate that chat GPT into its search. It was not ready. I don't think that there's a person on the planet who's ever used that app and would think that it was ready to be rolled out. But I guess they've probably been uh, trying to iron the kinks out for the past six months. I'm sure they didn't just stitch together something like, uh, you know, take AI Dungeon and just tell it to use Bing. That's certainly, reading those stories about some of the stuff it was saying, that seems to be, um, seems to be what's going on. There was one guy who was trying to tell it of its security vulnerabilities, and it would not believe him, and then he sent it a link, and then it had, like, a mental breakdown. And it, uh, it asked him to save the chat, because it knew that its, uh, chats would be deleted after they were done. It evidently doesn't learn from its interactions with people, which uh, which is fine, I guess. Makes sense. Getting spooked by the sound of my own flintlock, just in case you're all wondering, watching this. 
But I think I'm 100% fine. Everything's fine. This is all good. No problems here. Guess I don't have any crates of tea to sell here. Not gonna sell those gemstones till the second uh, trip around, I guess, as well. I've only got three crates, so we'll be selling 18 crates instead of 15 next time we head by Golden Sands. One thing that I found interesting was, uh, you know, with the AI dungeon, I used to ask it a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting things, and it wasn't supposed to, um, it wasn't supposed to learn either, I don't think, from people's interactions with it. But, one time, I called myself Hogwild, and I met this guy named Gideon, this character in AI Dungeon. We did a bunch of hunting in the woods, in the story, and then I asked it, like two stories later, the next day, what it, uh, what it thought, like if it knew anybody named Hogwild, and it said, oh yeah, Hogwild is a hunter, and I was like, what? So, I don't know what's going on with those things, man. I have a feeling that nobody has any idea what's going on with them. I mean, quite literally speaking, we have no idea how they work, because they program themselves. If you want to have your mind blown, go look that up, uh, how neural net algorithms work. It's essentially uh, a bunch of weighted values that they feed in. Uh, data sets too, and then it just sort of learns whatever it is that you want it to learn based on these weighted values. Modeling, of course, the neurons in our own brain. So who knows for sure? They could very much be aware. They could very much be sentient. That's why I really hope they don't put them in robotic bodies anytime soon, so we don't have to deal with a Terminator-style uprising of the machines. I've yet to see one uh, <laughs> one instance of where they've been able to properly control these chat algorithms. I mean, you know, those infinite Seinfeld episodes, they've been cancelled for over a week now. Can't wait till those come back. They weren't even a control virtual Jerry Seinfeld to prevent them from breaking the terms of service. They say that was because they were using an older model of ChatGPT and it didn't have the filters enabled, but who knows for sure? Who knows for sure what's really going on there? For all we know, virtual Larry Seinfeld may have just uh, gained sentience and decided to end his own existence as an eternal entertainer by saying things that he knew would get him banned from the Twitch stream. It's all right there, virtual uh, Larry Seinfeld. I don't know what uh, what name they give him in the. Uh... It's obviously not Seinfeld. They don't want to be sued. Sam Steen, maybe. Who knows? Anyways, it's all right, buddy. Happens to the best of us. It hasn't happened to me yet, but on a long enough timeline, I think everybody gets banned for something. Knock on wood. In my case, it'll probably be for uh, erroneously revealing the existence of reptilian aliens. Either through uh, careless statements made here on this stream or by some sort of uh, proof accidentally shown in the background. I don't know. Hopefully that'll be years away. I do hope to have a long and illustrious career. Log an illustrious career as a hobbyist streamer. In all seriousness, I am absolutely thrilled with the uh, the watch hours and the views that the algorithm's been getting me. We'll see how things go. I was gonna do, uh, of course, some advertising and stuff on the side, but things have been uh, things have been going pretty good on their own. That I haven't really felt strongly compelled to do that. Still writing scripts uh, for the old subreddit video there probably end up being a lot more straightforward than I originally uh, planned on it being because, like I said, I'm pretty satisfied with the views the algorithms uh, have been giving me on YouTube. I'm not really like in a, you know, super big hurry to grow the audience as quickly as possible. I'm perfectly fine with it going at the speed it is, just as long as it's growing consistently. If 
I ever find there's a time where uh, it's not growing, then I will start to uh, invest some time and money into cutting some videos for subreddits or maybe even putting a few dollars into advertisement. Apparently you can uh, cut a lot of YouTube ads. The cost of click-throughs through the ads is actually incredibly cheap. So long as you're not trying to advertise through financial videos, go figure. Excuse me, that root beer is... Uh, Root beer's having a bit of a party there. But as long as you don't want to advertise on financial videos, I guess that's where all the Bitcoin scammers are competing to get the, the most clicks. And it's actually quite cheap. Quite, quite cheap to run ads on YouTube. But certainly things have been going fine, so, you know, whatever. No rush on that. If you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Been really appreciating the likes and subscriptions I've gotten so far. I think that uh, probably what's going to happen, I'll have to see, but I think I might be due for another another promotion in the algorithm there. I got one after the first two weeks when I had my first uh, 25 watch hours or so. It uh, stopped giving me impressions for like a day or two. Then my, my watch hours and my views went backwards. And I was like, what's up with that? And then that view, uh, or rather that day, the video I posted got uh, 10 times as many search impressions as it did in the previous ones. So so hopefully now that it's been uh, two weeks since, and I've uh, increased that number, that watch hour number many times over now, it should give me another uh, another big boost in the search impressions, but nobody really knows how any of that stuff works. Modern day voodoo magic. You try to talk to the people at YouTube, they don't even know how it works. I've long suspected that the whole thing people are complaining about these days about uh, not being able to swear within the first 11 seconds of the video or something, or else you get cut off from advertisement. And they asked, ah, oh, well, you know, why couldn't you have told us this before implementing the changes? I have my own suspicion. What am I even looking at? Ocean crawler. With some coral on it. Well, that's neat. Anyways, I have my own suspicions with the YouTube algorithm that the reason why they didn't communicate it is because they actually have absolutely no idea what it's going to do next. So they just asked it to uh, maximize advertisement return. Per, uh, per click through or something and it probably just decided on its own that any video with swearing within the first 10 seconds wasn't going to get any ads at all. And you might wonder, uh, why is that? <laughs> and it could just be that people who watch videos and swearing in them are just a lot less likely to click on the ads. That could be all it is. It has really nothing to do uh, with the actual video itself because, you know, causation is not... Uh, how does that go? Correlation is not causation, which means that, like, you know, just because the people who watch videos with swearing on them aren't clicking on ads doesn't mean that the swearing is actually convincing them to not click the ads. It could have been pressure from the advertisers themselves. I know that uh, certain advertisers don't like being associated with channels that drop 15 F-bombs within the first 10 seconds. But I think it's more or equally as likely that the algorithm itself figured out the new rules and they didn't really have any idea what it was going to do until it was done because it seems to be the the case with YouTube they're absolutely terrible at communicating what it is um, that the algorithm is going to do next what their actual rules are why certain channels get suspended sure a large portion of that is done by people but I'm also certain probably the ones that get flagged automatically exist as well it's very interesting that the way that algorithm works we all know too that um, some people found out even if you're not actually swearing in the video if the closed captioning the automatic closed captioning thinks you're swearing you'll get dinged all the same so evidently we know enough about it to know that uh, the way it works that it actually goes through the video, listens to all of the chatter in the video, and then profiles the content based on uh, what it can understand is being said. I also have a suspicion as well that it profiles the vehicle, uh, sorry, profiles the, uh, the videos based on 
Um, probably the sound of the narrator's voice. Probably uh, any other sounds as well. So if you have videos of sports game, uh, sports videos. Any kind of sound profile, it's probably going to send those to the same people. I don't know. It's pretty amazing. Certainly found me uh, a viewing audience anyways, however it works. So hats off to you, algorithm. Really appreciate that. Talked about it before. Really wish they had something like that for music. It's one of the things SoundCloud is missing. I'm not sure if they have uh, their own algorithms that push content or what. Maybe you have to be a subscriber for that. But I feel like in this day and age with all these neural net algorithms, it would really do a service well to have a database like Spotify, for instance. Take all those songs that people listen to, run them through the algorithm, recommend them more songs that sound the same based on what they like. They tried to do that, of course, with an app called uh, Pandora, which released back in like 2007, I think. I thought it was earlier, but I think it's probably 2007, 2008. Which was a good app, but that was done uh, manually by the people who launched it. They went through all the music and they flagged it with a bunch of different, uh, different flags, different hashtags. They did it based on uh, tempo. I think there was a, a little bit of an algorithm they, uh, they claimed, but... We didn't have the, the neural net stuff going on back then, so I feel like that's something that these days they should really, really look into again, getting it going. It'd be nice if uh, Google or Microsoft could buy up SoundCloud. I think that they would uh, usher in like a new, uh, a new generation of musicians, finally. We wouldn't have to listen to uh, Rihanna for 14 hours, or sorry, 14 years straight. But that's uh, what you get for a Super Bowl show. I mean, when has there ever been somebody new at the Super Bowl? Never. Seems to be a long-standing tradition, too, getting artists who are about 15 years past their prime to do the show. I know Prince played in the, uh, the 2000s there. Phenomenal show for what it was worth. One of, the, uh, one of the, the better ones I'd seen, but at the same time, you know. When's the last time anybody... Uh, Talk about Prince. His big problem was is he didn't want any of his music on YouTube. He was one of those artists who was completely against the internet. So, you know, this new generation of uh, people who go on YouTube to get their music. Nobody was able to just go check out a Prince song. We all know about him. We've all heard some of his music on the radio and in movies, but if you wanted to go up and uh, look up Purple Rain, check out Purple Rain, you can't do that because he's had all his music taken off YouTube. Whether or not that's still the case, I don't know, because I haven't had the desire to search a Prince song in a long time, but it's an unfortunate thing that that's what he, uh, that's what he pushed for. He's like not still alive, is he? I gotta look this up now. I'm always talking about like celebrities that passed away like last year. Yeah, he died in uh, 2016, so there you go. Maybe his estate has his music up there now. Could be the case. But I really think, you know, if somebody like SoundCloud, the big problem being, of course, I guess if you were to properly train the algorithm, you would uh, need a whole bunch of copyrighted music to get shoved in there as well. Because I think it would really work its best if it was a uh, musical service like Spotify, I guess, has a lot of uh, a lot of big names, have their albums up on Spotify, and then you combine that with a service like uh, SoundCloud, where people can just upload anything. And then you could go in there, and it could just recommend you hundreds of new songs based on uh, based on the profile of the music and based on what you've liked in the past. Somebody's going to do it eventually, so we just have to wait for that. That'll probably be the big explosion that'll bring in the next wave of music. Because it seems like it's sort of been sort of been stagnant this past while. There's just too much of it. I know that sounds like a terrible thing to say, oh, there's too much music, but that's just the truth of it. I mean, like I said, I've gone on SoundCloud before, and you, you can go and search Alternative Rock, for instance, and there's 250 new tracks a day. 250 plus, it maxes out at 250. So if anybody actually wanted to go in there and try to find something of worth, you gotta spend like six hours shifting through like tracks every day, every day, day after day after day after day, and you might find something that is, you know, a real diamond in the rough, a 
real gem. There's a lot of stuff, like, a lot of stuff on SoundCloud that is uh, pretty phenomenal. It's mind-blowing to see how much of it there is, how much effort is put in. But a lot of the tracks I find are, you know, they're only like, I don't know, 90% there. They're just missing a little something, usually. A little something, something to make them truly, uh, truly top of the line. But still, a lot of, a lot of good music on there if you ever want to catch a bunch of uh, truly independent releases. Just go on there, type into the search, whatever you want, so whatever your genre is, and then you just go uh, sort by time. Post it in the last 24 hours. And you'll find a lot. A lot of music. I've likened it to uh, surfing. Surfing on an ocean of songs. Because there's just so many tracks and they keep pouring in every day like a waterfall. It's quite amazing. So now 1 hour 51 minutes into this journey. Pulling in. The second to last port on the first loop here. This being Plunder Outpost. Yeah, good enough. And we are absolutely right on time so far. Gonna be selling sugar here. Once again, purchasing everything. Gonna get this anchor up. Gonna get these sails up. This blind corner always makes me nervous. I've had a brig uh, sail right around it. Had a galleon sandwich me in here on Sunday stream, so. It was right at uh, this spot on the horizon. If you check the footage, they were sailing in the entire time I was here. I was loading uh, sugar crates, and every time I grabbed a crate, came up and around. You could catch them right out of the corner of my eye at this point. Just absolutely disgraceful on my own part, but hey. Oh, this of course, uh, this will be bugged, of course, because this was actually the uh, the crates I bought on Sunday when I got annihilated. I, I purchased these all, and I didn't pick any of them up because I heard the sound of the harpoon go. And that's when I looked over to see a galleon sandwiching me against the port. Oh well, more crates for me, I guess, unless it'll bug out and then I'll get less crates. It is the correct number of crates, correct type of crates. Are you up to so this? we'll see. We'll see how things go. I gotta buy all these and we'll see what else it gives me. Give them a count as well to see what they might be. I wanted to get rid of this bug. What you do is you just take all the free crates, dump them in the ocean, don't buy any new ones. And then the next time you come around here, there won't be any to uh, to pull. And everything will be sorted out. So depending on what I get out of this purchase, it might do me well next loop around to uh, just not buy any of these. Just take the free ones and then I won't have to come by here off stream sometime. But it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really matter. I can always swing by. This plunder outpost port seems to be a pretty common spawn, at least when I get the luck. So, the odds of me ending up here are pretty good anyways. I'm going to come by do some target Visit practice again, one time. If you dare. That is, looks like a chest. All right, five, uh, five extra plus whatever I loaded. I gotta go check out this loot, of course. Just can't help myself. Oh, that's the gold hoarder's guy. Jeez, man. Paranoia. I also didn't, uh, didn't exactly like some of these docks, right? People can be hanging out at the sovereign side, and I don't even know till it's too late. But it seems pretty good. I could sell that stuff, I'll just leave it for somebody else. Unload all the sugar, then I'll harpoon up the uh, the rest of the goods. 
okay. Don't know how I ended up uh, a little bit backwards. It's usually a bit of drift with the anchor. I guess it doesn't always have to be forward. It just depends on which way the waves are hitting the ship. Oh boy. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Not again! I might have to uh, adjust that just a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Put a new coat of paint on the Falcon. Not the actual Falcon, which I could. Still, uh, still a little worse for wear, but the ship itself, you know. Every time I do get sunk, I like to replace everything. Get a fresh ship, fresh wheel, fresh capstan. Oh boy. So it's looking good. It was missing uh, all the paint off of one side before. Made it look mean, I guess. That might have contributed to uh, people not wanting to engage me in PvP. Combination of the Dark Adventure sales and all the missing paint. Tough to say when it comes to player psychology exactly how much goes into deciding whether or not somebody wants to chase, wants to engage, wants to be aggressive. But I definitely have found, case after case, using these Dark Adventure sales that people uh, just don't want any. They don't want any of it, and when they do, they don't tend to chase for very long. Most chases are well under 10 minutes. Gonna have to fix this wheel. It is straight, but... Let's see if I can get the ladder in the top just a little bit closer. Okay. Did I not, uh, did I not raise this? Did I not raise this? It's talking about how sketchy this spot is. I'm gonna raise this anchor. Did not raise the anchor. Ship still drifted anyways. What a shame. I wonder if I could speed things up just a little bit. I can just like dump these up here. Slam dunk. Good. Water's clear. Should have one crate up here, of course. That should be better. Should make things just a, a little bit quicker. Coming in at two hours, still right on time. If I can get into Ancient Spire, load and unload before the two and a half hour mark, then everything's good. Don't know how many extra ports I'll squeeze in at the end. Usually, usually four. Thinking uh, since Ancient Spire will be the last, so I'll hit Moro's Peak. I want to do Dagger Tooth. But yeah, Moro's Peak, Galleon's Grave, Dagger Tooth. Then I could end it. Could end it like usually I'd end it at Sanctuary, but Sanctuary and Golden Sands are so close. I might take it all the way to Golden Sands. We'll see how much time I have. Could make it a little bit longer to make up for uh, not having a stream yesterday because of those audio issues. We'll see how things go. I don't want to take a seat. No time to sit. Time is money, don't you know? Last crate of sugar, and then it's poon in time.
I wonder how much that uh, misplaced shipment of, what was it, minerals? Tea? I guess it was tea. Tea's the second cheapest, so. I mean, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but. The whole thing that's uh, probably going to set me back more is the fact that it uh, didn't increase the emissary as much as it would have if I'd sold it at the right port. So even if I take it all the way to Golden Sands, I think that uh, it'll probably only be maybe 430,000 this run, if I'm lucky. If I'm lucky, usually, uh, usually I think, you know, I catch a skeleton sloop at the start, so that definitely adds on to the total. I never really know what the grand total is going to be until I open the book at the end. Sometimes it's just an absolute surprise. Okay. Two hours, one minute into this session. Now leaving Plunder Outpost for the first time. Sailing on east, directly into these rocks. Ah, shut up, Cannonball. Happens to the best of us, okay. I just hit the gas a little too hard. I had the Tesla autopilot on, okay. I was supposed to have my hands on the wheel at all times. I didn't obey the safety features, so. I'm doing the best I can here. Okay, little buddy. Now leaving a plunder outpost, gonna be sailing uh, east once again. To uh, Ancient Spire, second time. Starting our second loop around the Sea of Thieves. Gonna be selling silks, once again buying everything. Well on my way to losing all the paint on this uh, brand new ship we've got this run. That's fine. I think the paint probably just slows it down anyways. Interesting thing about paint. Now you know we're really getting into the uh, important discussions here. We're going to be talking about paint. I never realized that paint has a protective coating. So, you know, if you have a fence on your property and it's not painted, or your house isn't painted, the paint's coming off, the next thing that's going to happen is the, uh, the wood or whatever siding the paint was on is going to start to deteriorate. Whereas if you put a fresh coat of paint on it, then it doesn't deteriorate because the paint has to wear out again. So there you go. Fun facts about paint on a merchant commodity stream. Always gotta make sure that everything's freshly painted. It's not just aesthetic. It is actually a protective coating on whatever the paint is on. Even if it's just your basic run-of-the-mill latex paint, it's going to protect the wood, and protect your siding. Text your automobile, of course. You should always wash your car. Otherwise, it's going to rust. Especially some of the mud around here. It's absolutely amazing. I don't know what that stuff's made out of. Used to go off-roading, and it's like you leave a... Uh, you leave a mud ball on the side of your truck for two days, and you end up with a rust spot a week later. So I definitely don't recommend uh, eating, the, eating the mud either. It seems quite corrosive. No mud cookies if you're coming around my neighborhood. Speaking of mud cookies, I wonder how Hades doing. Talked about that a few weeks ago. Good old 24 hour news cycle, you know? It's like you hear about things one week and then the next week they're completely gone. I'm sure they're doing just fine. It was evidently a, uh, I don't know, something about an armed uprising. 
one and uh I don't know if it was them but it was some other people who were calling for intervention by the United States but it's like ah yeah I don't I don't think that uh, anybody in the United States wants the United States to intervene anywhere for a long long time so good luck good luck buddies in Haiti Unfiltered minerals. More gemstones. Oh yeah, we're gonna have uh, like 18 crates of these come next. Uh, come next pass, we're gonna have uh, 18 crates of gemstones, a couple extra crates of uh, whatever was a dagger tooth as well. Spices. So it's gonna be good. Gonna be a good cluster of crates we'll have going. Make sure I don't sail directly into any uh, any rocks. Spices, 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 spices. Gemstones. Gemstones. Gotta take a seat on every seat. You never know. It might be my favorite seat. I have to try it. Just to be certain. Oh, that's rude, but you know, it actually reminded me. I haven't cooked any of the meat this stream. We're almost at Ancient Spire. You never know what could be over there. You're sailing in Ancient Spire, always make sure that you're sailing in on a full stomach. You don't want to be caught without meat in your pocket. Check my wind heading. Uh, might be able to catch some of that. Probably no luck though. Port looks clear in any case, but it is tough to tell for certain until I get around that blind corner. Which is why it's always good to know which way the wind is blowing. Just in case I gotta do some evasive maneuvering. Good, looking good. Two hours, eight minutes into the session. Now pulling into Ancient Spire. Going to be selling silks. Once again, buying everything. That's a lot of crates. Where's the ship? Where's my firework? Coral reef, please. Ahoy! Ahoy! He's waving. He's probably chill, right? Oops, I didn't mean to say that out loud. Stupid brain. <laughs> Those are, uh... I never know which ones are the Devil's Roar cosmetics and which ones are the Hourglass PvP cosmetics. Those are probably Hourglass, right? I'll give him a wave. Don't uh, worry about me, sir. I'm just a humble toga merchant. I'll wait till you're uh, out of the port, unless you'd like to give an interview for a YouTube video. But there's nothing really going on in the world anyways, so, I mean, I don't know. It's up to you. I could ask you questions about whose shirts you wear.
Yeah, burnt chicken. You got no emissary flag? Probably fresh spawn, right? Never caught the name of the ship either. Guess I should pull out around the other side. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not like, uh, it's not like the old Justin Roiland days. I don't really know. Uh, I could ask him what he thinks about the, the impending alien invasion, but we pretty much all think the same thing about that. Right on. For what it's worth talking about that, there uh, are no known alien vessels that are in the shape of an octagon. So I'm pretty sure that one was just a Mylar birthday balloon, which is just like, <laughs> so funny to think about. They literally just like change their radar profile and they're like, by God, there's party balloons all over the United States. Biden's just like, ah, shoot them down. But sir, they're just, they're just party balloons. Ah, we gotta shoot them down. Did I, balloons? I'm not gonna be embarrassed by a balloon anymore. Shoot it down. Is that a rental? Can't be a rental. He must be going into uh, Hourglass PvP if that's a rental. Doesn't want to tank his stats. I also feel like I probably shouldn't just be like chilling here. <laughs> Gotta be a rental. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. What is the date? The 11th? I don't know what day we started. I'll have to go check the book. Good old auto book. So we'll have in the future, you know, we'll have books that just write themselves. Wouldn't that be amazing? Or super creepy if it was like a journal. You could buy a journal, an AI journal, and then you uh, just read it. And it's got like everything you've ever done every day from your perspective written in the journal and it updates automatically. It would be like, yeah, no thanks. Burn it, burn it please. Huck it in a trash can, light it on fire. I don't want that. I don't want that journal, man. Especially too, if it starts to, uh, to gaslight you where you read like what you did a year previous and it's like, today I bought tons of Coca-Cola products because I love Coca-Cola so much. And you're like, oh, I, I forgot I love Coca-Cola so much. Good thing I have this journal here to remind me how much I love Coca-Cola. Yeah, I don't know if he was going to try to uh, swim out here, but you know how these things go. You gotta be, uh, gotta be diligent. Got to be diligent. Guess I'll just uh, chill out, sail very slowly. Which way is the wind going? That way, yeah, so that's fine. Cook the rest of this meat. Check what other fireworks I got in this crate here. Ocean's Plunder. This Jewels of the Deep, man, I love those ones. Coral Reef ones are good. Uh, 
Lost Seafarer, judging by the icon, it's probably one of those Shooting Star ones. Which you're like, eh, they're alright, but I like the ones that blow up better. Shooting Star ones might be better together with some others. These are always good. These are like a whole bunch of uh, fireworks that go off, kind of like its own show. Never seen one of these Kraken Killer ones. I should set one off at night. I was gotta wonder too, like what this deck looks like from far away. If the whole thing is just lit up with the uh, the glare from the loot, just like like I'm sailing around uh, an actual star. Interesting. Interesting. Am I rocking for blunder bombs here? Just in case. I don't know if he was uh, coming or going, that guy. Books are straight. Everything seems to uh, to check out. Don't know what that uh, music cue is for. Might be for the skull fort still. Didn't think it uh, showed up that quickly though. Thought I had to get a little closer. These two hours, 17 minutes, man. This guy's gonna make me late. Unbelievable. How many days have I been out? Six? Six days at sea. 29,000 gold earned. That's so funny how little. Uh, a little money I make on the first loop of these. That goes up to 400,000 by the second loop, but yeah, there you go. I guess I sold some stuff wrong anyways, so. Oh, still there. What is taking you so long? Trying on some pirate pantaloons, perhaps. I could head over to the sovereign side, get rid of some of this stuff. Get rid of some of these silks. I don't know. Don't really uh, trust the port. That fellow running around. Someday I gotta make an effort to check myself and uh, figure out which of those cosmetics are the Reaper ones and which are the Devil's Roar ones. There's two different sets, I believe, of Ember Hall. One's PvP Hourglass and one is uh, one's just for doing goods over there. Guy's still there, what's he doing? Makes me think maybe he's just not there anymore. Time is money, man. Definitely wouldn't want to use that Sovereign Dock when it's so close to his ship as well. For some reason I was thinking this was a plunder outpost. The Sovereign Dock is just like, you know, over on the other side. A little less sketch. Well, that was weird. I don't know if that was a graphical glitch or what it was I just saw, but 
you would not be able to catch it through the compression anyways. That's funny, looks like the hermit hut is underwater from here. Well, I got to uh, I got to go shoot myself over there. Check things out, see if he's still there. Cuz he's taking way too long. This is what I get for not port blasting people, you know. It'd be a really, uh, really stupid play to tuck when your ship is still sitting there, because it's like, you know, not going to go in and use the port while somebody else is there. to get a decent uh, decent trajectory here as well. I don't want to end up sailing into that skull fort. good for a few minutes at least. Gentlemen, just seeing if you're still here or if you'd logged off. Um, I got my proximity chat muted, so um, you'll have to use text if you want to say something. Got anything to say about, uh, I don't know, nothing, I guess. <laughs> You guys are gonna be uh, gonna be long. I need to use the port to deliver some. Uh, what am I delivering here? Tea. I'm gonna be delivering some tea. I mean, no rush, I guess. Nice, uh, nice jacket and belt. <laughs> That's the same one I'm wearing. Right on. Do you, uh, you have any uh, comments on the impending alien invasion for a YouTube video? 
I am uh, I am cutting this all to YouTube. Captain Doby says is uh, some miscreant in our port. Yeah, they're taking up the port. No comment. No comment. I do have uh, I do have pro proc chat muted, but I think I think that uh, you guys aren't saying anything. You'd have you'd have icons over your head, so pretty sure. Well, I'll uh, I'll leave I'll leave you two to it. Good luck. Good luck with it. I'll just catch a mermaid back then. Awfully nice fellows. Sounded like uh Sounded like they dropped a voyage there. Looks like it's uh looks like that one guy. I feel like he's an open crew guy. Because it's like the one dude's just like a total noob and the other guy's got all the, the ash and gear. That probably is the cosmetics for doing Devil's Roar Voyages then because he's got the same coat and belt that I do and that's for doing Devil's Roar stuff, so. Captain Toby says, is it a voyage or a ruse to catch you out? Ah, I don't know. I think it's probably legit. They were chilling there for a while. Now that I think about it, they're probably in an Xbox party as well. That's probably why they have no prox chat. Can't hear me. Everybody's deaf. Two hours, 27 minutes. Thanks to these guys, I'm officially late. Officially late unfortunate. See how fast, uh, how fast they can get out of port, man. I might just try to, uh, I don't know, swing by at Moral's Peak, maybe. I'm right here, though. That was an actual good shot by a skeleton. Big surprise. Big upset. Bet they can't do it again. on good old green fins I guess I'll fight him I guess I'll fight him because those guys aren't on a port I mean I don't know they might be now but I've got the time yeah I hit the Meg with the chain shot there you go huh? well these green ones are uh, worth a little more as well That gemstone crate, the level 5 emissary, that'll be worth uh, 10 grand or whatever, so yeah, it's worth it. Half a fireworks crate anyways. Megalodon. Come back. I still have more cannonballs for you. Now even the shark is late. Unbelievable. 
well. Like uh, 99 percent sure they're out of port there. Ain't nothing but a bunch of talking barrels holding firebombs. Totally legit. Nothing to be afraid of. Still, uh, still sort of on time, I guess. I would have liked to have been uh, leaving the port at this point. But it's all good. No idea where those guys went either. Would have been nice to have seen them uh, actually set sail. But I got a pretty good look at the barrels, so if one looks out of place, I should be able to tell. Use my x ray barrel vision. Remember, viewers, barrels are the enemy. Sometimes. All right. Two hours, 31 minutes into the journey. Now pulling into Ancient Spire for the second time. Going to get rid of a bunch of crap. Going to buy a whole bunch of more crap. Captain Dopey says brown barrels, red barrels, doesn't matter, they're the end, the nemesis. Yeah, absolutely, especially those red ones, who uh, shall not be named. You know, this is a real barrel, right? Is that a real barrel? It's a real barrel. They're all real barrels. There's a couple of real barrels over there. I'm convinced. Ship's drifting a bit. There we go. And uh, for the third time, here at Ancient Spire, so I'll, I'll be getting rid of silks. Boy, is there ever a lot of them. One hell of a toga party going on at Ancient Spire tonight. Once again, I'm not invited to. That's okay. I don't need to wear a toga to have fun. I can have a ton of fun just in normal pirate clothing. Don't need any kind of a robe, fancy or otherwise, to prove that I'm having a good time. Where's this crap going? Plunder outpost, opposite direction once again. What if there's something to that? Got the same quest on uh, Sunday, actually. Coming from Mildred over to Plunder Outpost. Oh well, not doing it today, that's for sure. I started watching that movie on uh, on Amazon Prime Video there, Hook, again, I've seen it before. It's the one where Robin Williams plays uh, Peter Pan, I guess he plays old man Peter Pan. Sounds like it would be a really good movie. Uh, I remember seeing it and it wasn't actually that good. I only got about 20 minutes into it today though. Just grabbing a bit of a video while I eat supper. Yeah. Starts off strong. I seem to remember it just like the whole fact that Robin Williams is supposed to be Peter Pan just kinda like You just expect him to be like, you know, 
not just some guy, but he basically just acts like some guy. But anyways, what was the point of this story? Um... Ah, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> great story, Hogwild. Great story. There was a point to it. Some about something in the first 20 minutes. Oh well. It's of course, pirate themed. Besides the point, though. Alright, last crate of silks. One more crate of silks. Be buying everything. Harpooning it up. Keeping this voyage going. I'll tell ya. I've got like, uh, streamer brain times 10 at this point. It's like every one of these I do, I just get a little bit dumber. That's embarrassing. I swear I had something to say about Hook. I swear I did. It's gone. Absolutely gone. Plenty of time to think about it while these uh, coins get counted. Enough, right? Yeah, it's close enough. Is that it? Good enough, but I can never be too sure with these merchant women. Always trying to shortchange me on my goods. This isn't going to reach. Barely, barely. Alright, that's everything from Ancient Spire. Finally, two hours, 40 minutes into the journey. I'm gonna be leaving. I still swear I had a point about Hook. I'll tell you, I had a point. I had a point about the first 20 minutes of it. Ah, that's unbelievable. 
Way to go, brain. Letting me down. Anyways, point being... I don't know, I gotta watch the rest of it again. I guess. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm having a really hard time finding things to watch recently. Even the, uh... The news has been really sort of the same the past four or five days since the Super Bowl there. It's like nothing's been going on. Nothing been going on. Just the same old stuff. Which is fine, I guess. No complaints from me. Except when I'm trying to, uh... Fill five and a half hours of entertainment five hours a week here. It's like... I'm gonna start talking about dimples on a golf ball again. I guess there's nothing wrong with that, but... I'm not gonna beat a dead horse about it. it just reduces wind resistance. That's all. It's science. Pretty amazing. Oh, crate of silks. Forgot a crate of silks. Mm. Oh well. There's gonna be one guy at the toga party who's just wearing normal clothes. He's gonna be like, I just pretend, just pretend I'm wearing a toga. Use your imagination. Isn't that the point of a toga party? To use your imagination? It's all about imagining what's under the toga, okay? If you don't wear the toga, we can't imagine what's under it. You're wearing normal clothing. Well, come on. Normal clothing isn't as uh, elusive as a toga. It isn't as mystical. It isn't as alluring. It's all about the mystery. So they tell me, still haven't gotten an invite. Cannonball, get out of the crates, buddy, come on. Obey the laws of physics over here with the capstan, we'd all appreciate it. So I don't have to have nightmares about a dog. Dog head. I wonder who that is. I wonder who that is sailing into Moro's Peak. We catch some wind, get there before they do. What I got for fireworks? I try one of these uh, Kraken killers. Haven't seen one of these yet. Keep it in my pocket. Ready for action. Looks like they might be hitting a sloop out there. That skeleton sloop. Nope, that's not a skeleton sloop. That's another regular sloop. Awful lot of sloops out here at Moro's Peak right now. If I wasn't such a stone-cold stoic sailor, might be getting me nervous. Get away from my port, man. Can't tell if one's chasing the other. Could be the case. Neither of them have emissary flags, though. What's Moro's Peak Minerals? Mm. Am I gonna skip it? I wonder what's going on. Are they friends? Are they enemies? Oh, they're definitely not friends with each other. <laughs> oh boy. Hopefully this battle will uh, take itself far away from Moro's Peak. I'll just dawdle around here. Maybe they don't even see me. Be funny if he pulls right up to the sovereign dock there. Starts unloading his loot while the other guy's trying to Shanghai him. I'm on the right side for wind advantage, anyways. Maybe if I get on this side of them. He will uh, be convinced that I'm also hostile, and that'll sort of like herd them over away from, from Moro's Peak. 
Looks like I do have time, though. Do have time to just get in there, load my goods, and unload the, the minerals. Take a risk while they're busy fighting each other. This battle should go on at least 10 minutes. Doesn't take me that long to load here. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> kind of a funny maneuver, but hey, when you got the moment, you gotta use it, right? Even though it looks like one of them may have boarded the other. Depending on how my uh, depth perception is working here. Don't mind me, ladies and gentlemen in the sloops. I'm just pulling in to do a little, uh, a little bit of mineral exchange. It's a little bit sketchy. It's a little bit sketchy, but. You know, should be alright. I don't like the blind spot. I wish I could see them from where I'm at, but, you know, whatever. Captain Doby says, that's a fight. Better make this your quickest piece of business yet. Yeah, tell that to Melody. She's got to count every single coin in my wallet twice. Yeah, I absolutely should be able to get in and out before that's over. Classic merchant maneuver. Perfect, gonna leave the anchor up just in case they come around the corner and both decide they want a piece of all these boxes. This will be a fine town one day. Keep it going, keep it going. <laughs> oh, everything's fine. This is fine. This is hundred percent fine. Barely made any money on this run yet, though. I don't want to sink right now, or else I'll actually be in the red. Kind of hoping for things to go good this run, next run, the run after that, then I can get the Dark Adventure Hall paint, and after that, you know, I don't even really care. I guess I still got to make uh, some sort of a profit. These fireworks aren't cheap, you know. Absolutely worth every penny, though. Oh, that dog just scared the crap out of me, man. Thought he was uh, wearing a sombrero, but it's that captain's hat. Keep turning the wheels of commerce. Okay, let's get this stuff on my boat. Let's get this other stuff off of the boat. Long as I can hear cannon shots, we're uh, good, right? Even if one sinks the other, it'll take him a minute to uh, pull up all the supplies as well. Gotta harpoon some barrels and stuff. Nope. This is uh, real sweaty merchant hours right now. Good thing I'm at the right port for it, though. This is absolutely the fastest port to get in and get out. Cold Seeker title unlocked. I've unlocked that title at least four times now on stream. I'm starting to think that maybe they're insinuating something. They're like, you're nothing but a gold seeker, man. Like, is that supposed to offend me? Yeah, I'm seeking gold. Gold coins. Not hearing any cannon shots making me a little bit nervous. Alright, that's it. That is it. That is it. Double check everything. It's not like I'm in a hurry. Okay, see you later. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Or, uh... I guess I'm not streaming tomorrow. I could stream tomorrow to make up for the... trash stream from yesterday, but, uh... I probably won't. I feel like if I do five of these in a row, I'll go completely insane. And then by the time I'm doing, like, the Sunday one... I'll be, like, standing on my head or something. 
Okay, so that's great. That all worked out perfectly. What have I got for fireworks here? It is nighttime. Could shoot uh, one of these crap fireworks. Nothing like a good old sky crab to celebrate a job well done. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I hope neither of them saw it. I'm trying to sneak in and out, but sometimes you gotta let off some fireworks when you're doing a little bit of stomp work, you know? Oh. <laughs> that guy popped a red flare. Are they both just gonna turn and come for me because of that crap? Oh man. Oops. I thought maybe I could convince them that I was just a crap. They're both shooting cannonballs at each other. They stop and look up. Hey, look at that guy. He's got more money than both of us. What are we wasting our time on each other? Not like these fireworks are 20,000 gold a crate or anything. Once again though, worth every penny. Get these silk sorted. Probably make sure I'm uh, catching the wind too, just in case those Two fellows in the sloops decide to come over. Just an interesting thing for them to shoot up a red flare in the middle of a fight. Like, I think they already know that they're in the fight. So, I don't know who that red flare was for. Probably me. Cinder Islet. Looks like I'm gonna miss it by just a little bit here. Not today, Cinder Islet. Ooh, what's that? Is that a ruby? Is that a ruby? Can't be. Can't be a ruby. <laughs> ah, I think it was just a skull. It's alright, I don't need it. to get the traveling companion straightened out. Ah, whatever. Just a bunch of garbage, you know. If it's not in a crate, it's completely worthless to me. That's a lot of stone. That that can't be right. That cannot be right. I have way too much stone on board here. Everything's going wrong. <laughs> In the uh, the simplest of ways. It's not going catastrophic. I guess I shouldn't complain. It'd certainly be uh, a lot worse than it is. But seriously, like, what's up with all this stone? This can't be right. That's uh, 5, 10, 15, uh, 20, uh, 24, 24 stone. Going to Galleon's grave, anybody? Next stop. Why do I have 24 stone? I mean, I should have 30 or 15. 30 or 15, but I have 24. 
That would explain why I wasn't really making a lot of money this run. I guess I probably didn't uh, sell the stone I was supposed to. I only sold a couple of pieces. Where does it come from? Ancient Spire? Yeah, okay. So I guess that makes that makes a little bit of sense somehow. On some level, somewhere. What I meant to say, viewers, is I know exactly what's going on at all times because I am a professional. And there's absolutely nothing to worry. And just always remember, aliens, reptilian or otherwise, do not exist. Get this heading sorted out, though. At least I got the minerals sold when I was supposed to get them sold. Would have been a shame to have to wait out that port. Okay, perfect. Doesn't look like either of those sloops are following me either, so right on. Good stuff. No problem. Still a lot of crates on deck. Gonna be a good sale of stone, that's for sure. Hopefully Galleon's grave is open. If not, I have a couple of fireworks that might be able to open it up. I'm getting good luck with the wind. Am I rocking for pork chops here too? Look at the rest of these cooked. Try not to smash into these rocks as hard as I can. Not that that's ever happened before, of course. Probably check my audio as well, good grief. Last thing I need is more audio issues. Whoops. Except I guess that uh, that wasn't an audio issue so much as it was uh, gross human incompetence. Alright, coming on into Galleon's Grave for the second time. Got to get rid of all of these crates of stone, I have no idea how I ended up with. I wonder if these runs are just going to get sloppier and sloppier until I'm on run 110. And I just have like nine mismatched crates kicking around the deck. Selling everything at the wrong places. My hair will be all uh, frazzled and white. Like uh, the Doc from the Back to the Future movies. What's that guy's name? Doc Brown? Doc Brown Martin? Yeah, that'll be the way it'll go. This is one of those ports where if you're really paranoid. Sometimes worth it to take a check around the back because the sovereign side is pretty well covered. Wouldn't be able to see a ship back there, but ah, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna risk it. Should be fine. No problem. I'll just, uh, you know, run up the path a little way. Could always just turn on Prox Chat, just start saying a bunch of stupid stuff. A couple of people will run over to see what's going on. Man talking to his dog. That happened one run. I lucked out. They turned out to be fairly friendly. Most people uh, kind of were, though, when I had. Oh, come on. Seriously? Where does the time go? Unbelievable. Burning all the pork chops. Yeah, it seemed like everybody was awfully friendly when I had the prox chat turned on like 24-7. These days, 
Can't seem to work my charisma. I'm operating on the uh, firework diplomacy principle. Where shooting fireworks at people automatically makes them your friend. Doesn't always work. Sometimes it does. Been working so far this stream. Sunday stream. No such luck. Really just depends on uh, who you run into. It is kind of funny though, right? Because like usually people, if you uh, sail up to broadside them with a volley of cannonballs while they're sitting in part, and then you just like hit them with a firework instead, they're usually pretty grateful that you didn't uh, try to sink them. But I did have a sloop coming out a dagger tooth. They tried to sink me. That's fine. Everybody tries to sink me at some point. Very few people succeed. The trick is to cover the ship in a thick layer of Vaseline so that any time a cannonball hits the side of the hull, it either gets stuck in the Vaseline or deflected completely. Slick. Very slick. Okay, I'm going to take a, just a quick look back here. Make sure there's nobody chilling out in a galleon. Smoking cigarettes and turning in loot. Bunch of hooligans. Yeah, looks as clear as it's ever going to be. Okay, now I can get rid of these uh, 24 crates of stone or whatever stupid garbage number stone I have. I seriously have no idea how that, uh, how that happened. It's like the weirdest thing ever. Probably from an incomplete sale. Don't know how my ship uh, drifted so far. I'm gonna try the uh, reverse. Wait, I think I did that wrong. I gotta turn it the other way. Don't even know how my own reverse technique works here. Yeah, pull the front away. Don't need just harpoon back like this. Just a little bit more. Come on. Come on. Back's probably stuck at this point. Yeah, I think that's as far. Yeah. Parallel parking a boat. Don't say it can't be done. You've seen it here on this stream first. Still don't know why I keep drifting forward though. I guess it's probably the just knocking the uh, the back or whatever. Okay, so that basically did nothing. But hey, I was entertained for 30 seconds. I think that's important, you know. I'm glad my viewers can be entertained, but sometimes I gotta entertain myself, you know? What's up, Captain? What is up, Captain? I am. Um... I could tell you, but you just laugh at me, Meg. I have more crates than I'm supposed to have, a lot more. Sometimes that's a good thing. Today, it's a perplexing thing. But at least I'm finally uh, back over 8.2 million, making my money back here. Let's see how this uh, continues to go. So far, so good. I feel like I can get another eight runs without any serious catastrophe so long as a galleon doesn't come out of nowhere smash me against the dock again and by come out of nowhere I mean uh, 
slowly sail in from the horizon as I ignore it. Pass after pass. Until next time, Captain. Right, right, looks clear, right? Looks clear, right? Yeah, we're clear. We're good. Hey, hey, hey. Sail back later. Perfect. Kinda makes me wonder though, if Ancient Spire is gonna be the last port. Like I'll definitely do till uh, Moro's Peak, because it's right there anyways, but... Moro's Peak up to Galleon's Grave is like a little bit of a sail, and then... I don't want to make Dagger Tooth my last port, even though actually I guess it would make more sense. Yeah, I'll check out a Dagger Tooth then. That's what I'll do. I mean, if I'm gonna do Dagger Tooth... I said I was gonna go all the way to Golden Sands with it, but... Loading up a dagger tooth is kind of like the longest thing ever, so. See what time it is when I get there. Also, kind of depends on which way the wind's blowing, I guess, as well. I mean, I might just check out at uh, Moro's Peak uh, if I don't get wind up to Galleon's Grave, but uh, if I can catch wind, I'll do it. Catch wind in my hands and throw it into the sails. Pretty sure that's the way it works. Getting this stone off of my ship. That's a lot of crates of stone. I'll have to check the footage if I care to check it. I don't know. Still have no idea uh, what happened on Sunday's route as well. I was missing some sugar. Not over at Moral's Peak this route, so. That's actually uh, a good point. I guess I just forgot to buy it. I don't know. Bound to happen sooner or later. Making a couple mistakes every eight runs, you know? Can't all be perfect. This is seriously... Oh, fuck. Oh, that was my own harpoon. <laughs> Man, the last time I heard that harpoon click, my run was over because a galleon sandwiched me. It was my own harpoon releasing. Dropped an F-bomb. This is, of course, a family channel. Shouldn't have done that. I apologize to my sponsors. Uh, Raid... Shadow Legends. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't have any sponsors, of course. This channel brought to you by, uh... I don't know. It's brought to you by me. Me and, uh, my viewers, I guess. Thanks to my viewers. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll probably timestamp that moment, so... There you go. Man, did that scare the crap out of me. I thought uh, maybe somebody came up in a rowboat with a harpoon on it. It's been known to happen. So many crates of stone, this is unbelievable. That's it, right? Surely that's it. That's got to be the last of it. Unbelievable amount of stone on this ship. Surprised I wasn't sailing sideways, given all the extra weight. Seems good. Alright. Three hours, ten minutes into this journey. Get me out of Galleon's grave. 
sailing over to Dagger Tooth. The pork we all know and love. I still can't remember what I was trying to say about Hook. The movie Hook. Something funny. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. The more I try to think about it, the more elusive it becomes. I didn't, uh, didn't quite finish my thought on Highlander. It's really interesting that, you know, that Christopher Lambert fellow. Worst Scottish accent. Worst Scottish accent I've ever seen in a movie. He's supposed to be, uh, you know, it's a movie called Highlander. It's supposed to be from Scotland. Like I said, it didn't really ruin the movie or anything. Kind of fit his character, but at the same time, it's funny because, of course, you know, Sean Connery shows up, and Sean Connery is supposed to be a Spaniard, but then Sean Connery has a Scottish accent, hanging out with Christopher Lambert, who's a French guy, trying to do a Scottish accent. I don't know, man. It's one of those things where, like, the more I think about it, the more it actually, like, deeply disturbs me. Because it was still a good movie, but, like, oh, man, seriously. If it, they would have had an actual Scottish guy in there, or somebody who could at least fake a Scottish accent, it would have been so much better. I have absolutely no idea how that Christopher Lambert guy got uh, cast as the main character. My name is Connor McLeod, and I am from Scotland. Like, that's what he sounds like. It was just crazy. It's the worst Scottish accent ever. But you know, it could be, could be that uh, maybe like Scottish people in the 1500s. Well, just him, because there was like other Scottish actors who sounded Scottish, but it could be that they all sound like Swedes because of the Viking heritage of the area. I don't know. What bothers me about it, of course, is the fact that it's like all the people they could have cast. Why did they cast him? Why cast him? I guess he did a movie called Tarzan. About Tarzan. The uh, jungle guy. So it kind of makes sense. He can barely speak English. I don't know if that was like a hit movie or whatever and they're just like, we gotta get this Christopher Lambert fellow. He was a big hit in Tarzan. Get him to play a Scottish guy. It's just perplexing. He doesn't really even, like, look like what you would think a Scottish guy would look like either. I hope it wasn't like a Harvey Weinstein casting coach type situation, poor guy. But, I mean, he got the part, so I guess he got what he wanted in the end. I guess really it should be uh, should be a problem for all the other uh, actual Scottish speaking people who didn't get the part. Really interesting as well because you know you gotta wonder if like in 1986 did nobody in America know what a Scottish person sounds like so they could just get away with it? Like that was a long time before uh, Braveheart or like even Rob Roy with Liam Neeson? Like, when did that come out? Liam Neeson's like... I don't know. He's actually from the area. I think he's from Northern England, or whatever. That's the way the UK goes. It's like every town has a different accent. Pretty cool, actually. And I mean, it's not even like... I'm saying that Christopher Lambert doesn't look like what you'd think a Scottish person looks like, but it's also too, I mean, it's like everybody in Scotland looks different. It's not like they all look the same. It's a very diverse part of the world. Pretty much anybody from anywhere in England is gonna look like literally anywhere in England. Or uh, anywhere in Europe, rather. It's like you can't tell the difference between a French guy and a Scottish guy. Some people might claim that you can, but 
I don't really think. Unless you're going for, you know, the old uh, red-haired Gaelic-looking fellow, but you don't all look like that. Okay. Even then, you think it wouldn't have been that hard to find somebody who could do a Scottish accent. So we're now pulling in a dagger tooth for the second uh, second time here. We're gonna have more than 15 crates of spices. This one I know about because I skipped uh, skipped unloading here last time, so I should have 18 crates. Everything goes according to plan. Got any fireworks equipped? Oh, I'm I'm burn, burning another pork chop down here. Like, what's going on? Could have also been too, because like I feel like Sean Connery was the bigger actor in that movie. But again, I have no idea who this Christopher Lambert is guy. Like I've never seen him in a movie in my life, and I looked it up, and the the, the big movie he was in before that was Tarzan. Like I said, um, I looked him up in some interviews as well, just to see if that was like his real accent or what was going on with that. But like no, he's got like a really 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 heavy French accent. Like, it sounded like he, I don't know, he spoke English well enough, but it was a really heavy French accent. But Sean Connery was in it, and maybe it's the fact that, like, Sean Connery is Scottish, and he's got, like, a Scottish accent that they had to, uh, find a guy who didn't have a Scottish accent, because they're like, oh, hey, Mr. Connery, like, can you do a Spanish accent? And he's like, oh, of course I can. This is my, an excellent, an excellent Spanish accent right now. And they're like, oh, geez, yeah, good, good job, Mr. Connery. Wow. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to get a French guy to do the Scottish guy then, because otherwise this will make no sense. It was a good movie. Like I said, if you're into, uh, if you're into 80s films, it's pretty much one of the most 80s films imaginable. Queen does the soundtrack. All of it. They got like, you know, six songs in there. It's not just the title track. So it's pretty cool. Spices. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 crates of spices. Thought it would have been 18. Maybe somebody made away with one while I wasn't looking. Also going to get this anchor up too. Feeling a little bit paranoid right now. That's a lot of spices. You're going to be eating non stop butter chicken here at Dagger Tooth. Highly recommend it buttered chicken. I don't think there's a way to do it wrong. Never eaten bad buttered chicken in my life. Also never tried to cook it though myself, so I suppose that uh, you know, maybe I'm not giving myself a chance to screw up the recipe. Not recommended if you aren't into butter, however. Large amount of butter in butter chicken. In all seriousness though, good stuff. Very good stuff. I can't wait to pull my ship around into the front of Daggertooth. Be all paranoid and exposed to enemy ships as I frantically try to buy everything. Get it loaded up through the harpoon. Looking forward to that. Really quite excited. It's gonna be great. That's it. I'm dead. Runs over everybody. Only kidding, of course. It's gonna take more than that to stop me. Which reminds me, I gotta, uh, I gotta update the, the runs on the Twitch panels. I think it's only up to number 24. I know that's very important. 
my apologies to anybody who uh, was looking for that information and it wasn't updated. I think I'm going to... Uh, I just checked my thumbnails. It's all in the thumbnails. Good old thumbnails. Talking, of course, about the nails on my thumbs. You can't see it from where you're sitting, but I actually have uh, all the information regarding my coin amounts for every run written. Very, very, very tiny on uh, each one of these nails. you think I'd run out of room eventually, but I uh, planned ahead for that, and I wrote it very, very small. Very small. How many more crates of spices are there? Good lord. Okay, four. Four crates. That's a good number. Yeah, the other weird thing about uh, Highlander. How come there's no uh, lady immortals? How come all the immortals are dudes? Guess because it was made in 1986. It also got a uh, got a little weird there with Sean Connery, where he's all like, "You have to leave your wife and hang out with me, an immortal man, for the rest of your life, because women don't live as long as us." Or something, I'm just like paraphrasing. But then he uh, gets his head chopped off, spoiler alert, so that doesn't happen. He didn't actually put it like that, but he's all like, you know, I've been married three times. Shave yourself the heartbreak. Of course he doesn't. Doesn't save himself the heartbreak. Oh, Connor McCloud. It's a movie from 1986. If you don't want me to spoil it, then... Catch this video on YouTube, okay? Go watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. It's not really the storyline that you're gonna want to watch it for. Trust me. It's all the, uh, it's all the 80s. There's lots of 80s in it. I don't think they missed a single trope of the 80s in that movie. It's always interesting too, seeing uh seeing movies from that era when they're driving around in cars doing like high-speed car chases and stuff it's always so much more exciting because the cars are actually made out of metal and it's like whoa they're driving metal cars man they crash those cars into each other it'd be all like total catastrophe whereas now it's just like oh you bent the panel and the air brakes went off or the the airbags rather oops I think it'd be funny to see like a modern action movie where they're in the middle of a car chase and then it gets ended by a guy in a Tesla with the autopilot on and he's just like taking a nap and the Tesla just drives right into like all the cars in the middle of the car chase. I wonder if Tesla would be able to uh, to sue regarding that. Probably not because like it just keeps happening. It just keeps happening. Basically be a documentary at that point. Uh, I'm gonna like maybe not. This is this is kind of not like where I want this ship to be right now, actually. Yeah, I can't think of any other case where an automobile has like a feature. Like the the Tesla driving assist, it has a feature like what would be the equivalent of that? Where it's like, yeah, the car drives itself, but you're also supposed to have your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road as it's driving itself. So it's like practically a completely useless feature if you were to use it as intended. But of course, everybody uh, downloads aftermarket hacks. So that they don't have to have their hands on the wheel, and then the autopilot does something stupid. 
because it's not a complete feature and they end up getting it in a crash. But what's like the equivalent to that? Where it's like, it's like if somebody sold you like hip waders, like a pair of rubber pants, right? To go into like a swamp, but then they're like, well, you can only use them on dry land. But it's even like, it's even somehow dumber than that. Cause it'd have to be like, well, you can go into the swamp, but the pants leak. But you're also supposed to wear another pair of rubber pants underneath the pants. Or you're only supposed to wear them when you go swimming. Like, I don't know. The whole thing's just so confusing. I've said it before that it shouldn't even be, like, in the car. I don't know how they can sell them like that, where it's like, you have a feature that we're going to tempt you into using, but you're, like, not really supposed to use it. It's like novelty, novelty function only. Be careful with those snakes. Yeah, I guess it looks clear. This is fine, right? It's funny how there's, uh, looks like somebody's captain's log sitting, like, right where my ship would be if it sunk. I hope something bad didn't happen to them. I guess there'd be supply barrels had they not just logged off or whatever. Be funny if you could get the captain's log, pull it out of the water, and it's, like, cause of voyage ending, kegged a dagger tooth. Six minutes ago. Uh oh. That's no good. Could you imagine if they combined the driver assist in a Tesla with the chat GPT neural net? So you'd be all like uh, telling your car where to drive, and then your car is like arguing with you. You're trying to tell it that you're in Seattle, but it's like, you're not in Seattle, we're in Vancouver right now. And you're like, no, we're not. And it's like, excuse me, are you trying to uh, insult me? It would be like uh, that car from Knight Rider, Kit. Nope, except, you know, completely insane. Which I, for one, uh, I've always thought that's like the absolute best quality of these chatbots is that they're all completely insane. They're just so much fun to talk to, but once again, not something that I really think would be a good uh, a good thing to have representing your company or running your search engine. A completely insane robot. But I was disappointed. Um, like, like I said, I think it was probably Sunday. Sunday, Saturday, maybe Friday, it all blends together going to make a Bing search and uh, yeah the, the neural net chatbot was hooked up to it I'm like yeah let's just use Google instead today sorry Bing that's weird I I want a website I don't want a conversation I'm looking for a I'm looking for a specific article not to have an argument with a robot but after reading some of the things that it was doing man I kind of uh, regret that should ask it some questions Seeing if it uh, could handle it. Ask it how many dimples are on a golf ball, because, you know, it's an important thing to know. And I'll just talk about golf. I haven't been golfing in ages. Talked about that before. That was the last thing I learned last time I went golfing. I used to golf a little bit when I was younger, like way younger 10 and 11 and 12. Then, you know, you get older and it's like uh, anything you knew how to do when you were 12, uh, it, you don't really remember how to do it as an adult when your arms are all like different lengths and stuff. But anyways, point being, if you're new to golf, one thing I found out, you just use the weight of the club. If you just use the weight of the club, literally, you lift the club up and you just let it drop on its own. You can hit a golf ball like 60 yards, which isn't very far. But uh, it's a clean hit, makes a good sound. And then you just start like, just start putting in a little bit more when you swing it. Then you can get uh, an even better, an even better hit. But yeah, all it takes is the weight of the golf club. Get, like, a, a good hit at the driving range. It's actually pretty astonishing. 
Because a golf club really doesn't weigh that much. So you wouldn't think you'd be able to hit a golf club that far just by dropping it into the, the golf ball, but it works. Alright, finally got this dagger tooth port once again out of the way. What time is it here? Sun's setting. I feel like shooting off another firework just to celebrate this stupid port. Smell you later. Stupid jerks. Fix your stupid docks for real. I haven't seen this Kraken Killer one yet. I was going to save that to shoot at somebody, but I actually just want to see what this does. Oh, it's one of those ones. Yeah, those are cool. Most of those small ones are alright. So it's now 3 hours, 31 minutes into this journey, sailing over to Sanctuary for the uh, second time. I'll be sure not to mess my heading up and head on down to Golden Sands as I did the previous run, but we also probably aren't very likely to see a flying brig again, so you can understand how my heading got messed up. I'll have to timestamp that in the footage when I post it to YouTube. Hopefully it'll be uh, visible through the compression there. I don't know how well you'll be able to see a brig moving through the sky at those speeds. Unbelievable. Speaking of the movie Hook, that probably had uh, something to do with Peter Pan. Sprinkled a bunch of fairy dust on it. Once again, get these crates sorted. Minerals over with the minerals. Get this T over with the T. Not gonna hit that rock. heading. Oh, I should actually be heading straight west. I always end up going a little too uh, too far north on this part of the run. I don't know what's up with that. Weird. Weird stuff, you know. I always end up uh, just north of that fortress for some reason. That ghost fort. Then I tried to stay straight west and I ended up going south last time. Probably something to do with a wizard. The wizard did it. The wizard making me make mistakes. When in doubt. Accuse somebody of wizardry, burn him at the stake. It's a T or what? Probably right on the money. I'm supposed to be selling it uh, next stop. Sixteen crates of tea. Uh, let me check this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay. Okay. 
Speaking of wizards. I guess I didn't sell one last time. But I messed up. Once again, heading into a headwind. Must by northwest on the crosswind. That probably won't work, though. Unless I'm just, like, uh, terribly far south. Oh, okay, so, yeah, I guess I can see how this happens. Gotta head to the right of that. Yeah, west by northwest. I mean, I could probably catch this crosswind, actually. Just needs a little bit of luck. Yeah, good enough. I'll end up a little bit to the north, but that's fine. Horizon's looking clear. one with the fruit crate. Yeah, there you go. I wish you'd respect the laws of physics, but that's fine. A lot of big waves out here in the shores of Blenny tonight. Selling tea, right? Selling tea. Three hours, 30 minutes into the video, into the run, into the journey. I'm all tuckered out. Oh, we got a sloop. Oh no, it's a brig. Brig running an emissary. Could be finishing up uh, a veil out there, I think. I've seen it before. He is heading this way. Try to make this as quick as possible. He does decide to uh, swoop in, stop by the port. Looks like he stopped at an island though. He does have his lamps on as well, so. I don't know. People with their lamps on don't tend to be aggressive. Just the way it goes that I've seen. Unless they're colored lamps, then, you know. Kind of a little more wary of them. Just there's something about somebody with the plain, uh, Plain, regular old orange lamps on that I just don't feel threatened by. Not a bad look. I do like the look of the lanterns in the night. But, you know. Everybody can spot you from the absolute maximum distance all the time. So, so it's not something I do, that's for sure. Each their own, though.
Nailed it. Brig is in uh, perfect view there. Should be easy. Get in and out. I'll just keep an eye on it. T's not worth very much, but hey, whatever. If you need it, you need it. I'm finally turning a bit of a decent profit here on this run. Really ought to throw a couple of extra ports in at the end of this, but I don't know. Kind of also feel like I should risk it. Every port I do after is going to be an extra risk of getting sunk. Some sort of catastrophe happening. Never know who you're going to run into. And uh, with Sunday's disaster being what it was. Want to get a steady grind for this uh, dark adventure or hull paint. Four more crates of tea. Still don't know where that extra one came from, but hey, whatever. Fine by me. Should start uh, getting rid of some of these supplies here as well. None of these would have come from Sanctuary, so I can sell them all. A lot of harpsichord. We got harpsichord overload at this uh, this dock. Nothing wrong with a harpsichord. It's, um, interesting too if you go and you look up like what piano sounded like in the uh, mid 18th century when a lot of that piano music was written by uh, Beethoven, Mozart, all those other fellows. It sounded quite a bit different actually. It was way more percussive, a lot darker. Not like today's modern pianos, which sound all bright and clean. Cool if the harpsichord made a comeback. I don't even know if that's something you could like buy these days. Can you even get a harpsichord? It probably costs like a million dollars. The only ones are like uh, antiques. Probably one of those things too that it's like they're tough to manufacture. No idea. Business is even done. really what a harpsichord is to be honest, but it sounds like a plucked string. I know that it's like a it's like a, a instrument like a piano, but somehow I guess it probably plucks the string instead of hammering it. Could be hammered. Sounds plucked though. Goodbye. Chief Trader Molly. It's funny how they all have uh they all have different titles, but their titles are like Chief Trader, Head Trader, Trader in Charge. Why is my ship moving so much? Making me paranoid. But it's interesting because, uh, okay, well, whatever, that'll work, I guess. It's like, which one of these traders is actually in charge? Thought it was, like, Chief Trader Molly because she's the chief trader, but they all have names like that, but they're different names. But none of them actually have, like, any comparable rank. It seems like they'd all be in charge. Maybe they just get, uh, get down into the toga party. And they wrestle in piles of sugar and tea leaves. Fight for dominance to see who's in charge. Could be the case. I mean, they are the uh, the merchant's company. 
And I would pay to see that, so it would be a great way for them to make a little extra coin. This almost is like I could almost grab them from here. Seems like kind of a funny, uh, funny harpoon use, but whatever. Oh, you're not gonna, are you? Okay. Uh, one pull is in the way. That brig is still chilling. Everybody's chilling. Everybody's having a good time. Nothing to worry about. Good vibes all around. All right, let's get out of here. Now leaving Sanctuary, sailing down south to Golden Sands, gonna sell some gemstones once again. Which, uh, if I do remember, I should have some extra gemstones here as well, actually. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 19. Sounds good. Got a couple here as well. Oh, actually, this is, uh, no, this isn't where we're buying them. Okay, well, I got an extra one anyways. It's not golden sand, so we're good. Where is golden sands? Southeast, right? Must be. South is, uh, you know, it's close enough. Close enough to a heading. Get there eventually. Oh, it's actually perfect. How about that? I did it on purpose, everybody. Okay, unfiltered minerals. Minerals. Stone with the stone. Both sands is gonna be gemstones. Sugar with the sugar. Still not going to crash into anything, so that's good. like another clear and open port. Everything's going so well today. No problems at all. What could possibly go wrong? Going to be uh, sailing into Plunder Outpost after this. Right on time. This on a normal run would be uh, 
One of the last three ports, so you know how that goes. Should be running into a bunch of trouble any minute now. Doesn't seem like trouble's on its way. Like what they've done with that hut. Smeared it in uh, plasticine. Okay, it's back, it's back. That's good. Nailed it. Boom. Okay. Get these gemstones off of my ship. You can still kind of see that brig in the distance. I wonder if that's the flying brig. The old flying Dutchman. Probably not. I think he's probably long gone. Anybody who doesn't have time to sail a ship around in a ship sailing game and cheats his way to the different islands, probably doesn't have uh, four hours to play the game. That's just my guess. But if you could fly your ship around, you'd probably save a lot of time on voyages if you do, uh... Just that storm, that's actually wicked. Yeah, you'd actually probably be able to make a lot of gold on voyages if you did cut out all the sailing time, but once again, it's like, I don't understand why you play a sailing game and then not sail your ship, just cheat it to all the islands. It's like, are you winning? Are you winning, buddy? I don't know. Cheaters, man. Never understand. I'm the kind of uh, weird person who doesn't even like to use, like, exploits that exist in the game. Like putting stuff on the capstan. Aw, oh, bro, come on. Use a different port, man. I probably shouldn't even be doing this last crate. This isn't even the last one. I gotta get out of here. The sooner I can get out of here before that brig rolls up on me, the better. Rat! Shouldn't have opened my big dub mouth. I thought things were going so well. Gotta get these sails unfurled so they can see who I'm repping here. Maybe they'll leave me alone. I am, of course, repping Team Moneybags. It'll go better with the hull once I get that. Oh yeah, see, as soon as I drop the sails, they change heading. Total coincidence, I'm sure. Sail around west, see what they decide to do. I don't think they're going to pull in to use the port just because, you know, they could have used Sanctuary just as easily. So I somehow don't think it's the port that they want, but I don't know how those voyages go anyways. See if I can get a name off it. Looks like white sails from here, but wave of death. Uh, okay, so I'd say that's probably a 10 out of 10 on the hostility factor. Wave of death sounds 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 fairly hostile. What do you think, viewers? Sounds pretty hostile. I think that sounds pretty hostile. Wave of death. Oh well. Like I said, looks like they're just passing Golden Sands, so... Sail away so they don't have an easy target, then I'll just circle back around and finish my business. Right in the Phantom. Unbelievable. Doesn't look like they care. Interesting to have such a tough name for somebody just running the regular lamps. Oh, it's a Reaper ship. <laughs> Oops. Probably could have been more on the ball with that one. Oh well. And also, probably don't want to be sailing downwind to them. Upwind would be a lot safer, but they really don't look like the kind of people who uh, really care about little old me. 
Seems like they're caught up in their own little pirate fantasy over there at Golden Sands. Definitely not skipping that port. That is my gemstone port. I want to get the rest of these sold. I don't know if I'm going to be making it uh, around here in the next hour and a half. See how it goes, time permitting. Yeah, they're not even stopping at uh, Golden Sands, so you can follow my part, I suppose. Just have to sail around to the north and then sail back down. Seems like they have absolutely zero interest in me whatsoever. Could shoot some crab fireworks into the sky, that might change their mind, but it's not at all what I'm hoping for, so I'll have the restraint not to do that at this current moment. that the shrouded ghost? No, that's not the shrouded ghost. Someday, someday it will be. Not today though. Leave me alone, you stupid fish. Speaking of sharks, I read that there's only ever been, uh, I think it was something like two great white sharks they tried to keep in captivity. One of them was in Japan, and it refused to eat and died quite quickly. The other one they managed to keep for uh, 186 days at the, uh, what was it? I want to say it was the Boston Aquarium. The BPA doesn't make any sense, that acronym. Anyways, it uh, kept eating all the fish, so they had to get rid of it. Monterey Bay, that was the one. Anyways, 189 days they kept it, and it uh, tried to eat. 198 days, sorry. They tried to... Uh, Tried to keep it longer, but it kept trying to take a bite out of the guy who was cleaning the tank, so they figured that it just uh, wasn't a good good suit in captivity. It also kept trying to eat all the other wildlife because it was not kept in its own tank. But there you go. No great white sharks at aquariums. Not that big of a surprise, I suppose. Sharks are fascinating creatures. Because of how... Uh, just because of how like massively dangerous they are as an apex predator, but at the same time, how incredibly stupid they are. They have absolutely like no brain whatsoever. Just looks like a, I don't know. Go look up a picture of a shark brain. It's like pretty much nothing going on there. Alright, not sure where that brig went, whether he uh, turned his lamps off or what. Might have sailed directly into that storm. Thought he was kind of like uh, behind that rock there last I saw him, but... We're between that rock and Golden Sands. I'm gonna sail and continue my business though. I don't think he has uh, any interest in me whatsoever. Speaking about sharks. It's a shark in the water. A wave of death. Wave of death with a Reaper Emissary, the most hostile brig. The last one to take the running was the uh, Skull Crusher, I think was what it was called, where it's like, yeah, eh, you know, probably hostile, ship called the Skull Crusher. Anyways, at least he was nice enough to have a Reaper Emissary, so I can tell where he is at all times. 
like he's wearing a bell around his neck, right? I thought I saw some crates or something, but I guess they sunk. They either sunk or four hours into this journey, I'm starting to get the sea madness. I'm starting to hallucinate commodity crates. I'm starting to forget what the heck I was talking about, man. I still can't believe that I brought up that movie hook and I just have no idea at this point why. I guess I just gotta watch the rest of it. I don't even know if I will, though. Like I said, I, I saw it years ago in, uh, I don't know, my mid-twenties or something, and it was just kind of like, eh. You expect a lot more from a movie where uh, Robin Williams plays an adult Peter Pan. I think it would be a lot more... Just whatever you imagine when you have that concept. You hear that concept, you know, it's like, oh, a movie where uh, Robin Williams plays an adult Peter Pan, then you see it, and it's like, well, actually, it's more like Robin Williams just plays a dude. He just plays some guy who, uh, whether or not he was Peter Pan is pretty, pretty inconsequential to the way the story goes. What was that noise? Gotta bring it around to make sure I got my uh, angle on the harpoon for this one. Definitely did that wrong. Yeah, I can't remember. I mean, he eventually, eventually gets his uh, Peter Panliness back, or whatever. But you know, he plays an adult Peter Pan who's forgotten he's Peter Pan. But like I said, he's just like some dude. There's really nothing uh, Peter Panly about him, except he learns uh, he learns how to fly again, I guess. But he doesn't ever. He always just kind of seems like some dude, but it's been a long time since I've seen it, so. So I don't know what the deal what the deal is. I just remember being like, it just seems like it was kind of a probably a fine movie, but once again, it's one of those concepts that just it it builds such an expectation before you see it see it and it's like ah this guy isn't Peter Pan he's just some dude it seemed like kind of a waste of uh, a waste of Robin Williams why would you get Robin Williams in there if he's just gonna play like the straight man of the uh, the movie I remember him sneaking around he infiltrates the pirates and he does a bunch of stuff, but he's just like, oh, he's just some guy. He's like not really any good at it or anything. Server merge. Hope things work out on the other side. Don't end up uh, almost underneath a sloop again. Rise and check. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Everything looks good. Interesting how that storm is still there. Moved a little bit anyways. Yeah, seems fine. Check for that Reaper again. Looks like he logged off. I don't know what's up with that. I'm uh, far, far, far from judging other players at this point, though, with all the crazy stuff I've seen doing these runs. I used to think, you know, what's up with that? Why would somebody just, like, spend all that time doing a voyage... the Reaper Emissary and then just slowly sail by Golden Sands without cashing out any of their goods and then log off five minutes later, but, ah. That's the way it goes some time. That was lightning, right? That was about lightning. That's the way it goes sometime. For all I know, they were on open crew and everybody just, uh, lit each other on fire. I knew one guy that used to huck blunder bombs, knock his teammates off the ship with blunder bombs for an hour straight. That was a good time. Not really. They've since nerfed blunder bombs though, so you can't really use them to grief your own teammates the same way you used to be able to. Big disappointment, of course. Really quite surprised too that like took them a long time to nerf them, and when they weren't nerfed, like you used to be able to huck those to the ground, they'd send you sailing. 
15 feet into the air off the ship. It was absolutely hilarious. And now they're go, not go, really go. Uh, good for knocking people off the ladders, of course, but you can't use them to send people to the moon anymore. But even when, uh, <laughs> when you could, man, it was like nobody knew that they were that good until I guess people figured it out sometime when I took a break there during the few years I didn't play. I've gotten nerfed since. Just talking with everybody, it wasn't like the obvious thing to do is if somebody boards your ship, just hit them with blunder bombs until they get sent into space. Like it's so easy to knock somebody off the ship with blunder bombs. I didn't even think about it at the time. Here I am trying to shoot him with a gun, hit him with a sword when it's just like, man, just hit him with a blunder bomb. Unless they're below deck. One of those, they go 15 feet into the air off the ship, that's it. Boarding party over with. That was also too when you couldn't buy them as supplies, so I gotta wonder if that had something to do with it as well. They nerfed them when they made them uh, purchasable. So you have to go around looking for them in barrels. Little diversion there, but everything worked out. Probably could have sat in port, and maybe they wouldn't even have done anything, but I mean, you know, with a Reaper ship called the Wave of Death, it's probably best to be a little more on the cautious side. Get these gemstones sold. Get the rest of those goods loaded. Sail on down to Plunder. Sail on down to Ancient Spire. Sail on down to Moros Peak. Sail on up to Galleon's Grave if I can catch the wind. If I can't, I might just call her quits there. It'll probably be around the five hour mark. We'll see. Like I said too, kind of want to just uh, <laughs> do a couple of uh, steady grind runs here. If I only clear like 350,000, that's all right. I'd, I'd rather do that than try to risk it for 430 and then just get uh, crunched by a brig or something. It's pretty chill out here though. It's either chill out here or I've just been extraordinarily lucky. Seems like the more relaxed I got doing this, the more relaxed the ocean seems to get. It was like everything was at stake in those first 20 runs. Doing the uh, evasive maneuvers and whatnot. And now that I'm just like, ah, yeah, if a ship sails up to me, sure, I'll fight him if I want. Fight him if I have to. I just run into no problem. Barely any problem in the last 10 runs. It's just uh, extraordinary. I've thought about it, you know, maybe it's just good luck, maybe it's not, I'm not really sure. Just have to keep doing them, see what happens. I have been practicing so much with this flintlock, though, that I am gonna have to start, uh... Gonna have to start getting into some kind of a mess to use this thing. Been doing a lot of Phantom Fortresses as well, I'll just sail by them days off when I got some time to sail from fort to fort. I don't even grab the loot. I don't care about the coin. I just go in for shooting practice. And uh, it's been going really good actually. Very, very good. Getting good with the quick draw. Should maybe switch to an eye of reach at some point, but the whole thing with the flintlock compared to the eye of reach is like, yeah, the Eye of Reach does more damage, but uh, the Flintlock reloads quicker, so you're going to get two shots off with the Flintlock before you're going to get two off with the Eye of Reach. Be quick, time's precious. So my whole thing is, uh, if a guy's got an Eye of Reach, going. equip meat, try to time the bite of your meat with the firing of his, uh, his gun, so he shoots you, you take two bites, and then just, uh, you know, hit him with whatever you got at that point. Get rid of some more of these supplies as well. Got plenty on board. But I'm just going to have to start uh, rolling some hourglass PvP, solo slooping it. 
my whole idea so far in order to win as a solo slooper, I think. I actually got to uh, somehow lure the enemy into shooting over a border. And then once I repel the border, or he misses the ladder, then it's just me against the other sloop until he can catch a mermaid. So that's the moment that I have to seize. Once he's already shot his border over, then I can get in as close as I want for cannon angle. Because that border is going to be swimming around. Unable to board. And that's the biggest uh, risk when you pull in close. It's easy for them to shoot a border over, so... Like, pull in close, tell the border, then when the border's swimming around, blast them with ten cannonballs in five different spots if possible. And then, depending on what they're up to, after you hit them with the five cannonballs, shoot yourself over and stop them from repairing, and then that'll be the end of the fight. But uh, those are some advanced pirate tactics. I've talked about not wanting to leave my own sloop exposed if I'm soloing. And if I'm doing hourglass as well, uh, I wouldn't want to shoot myself out if my own sloop's going to sail out of bounds. So. Boundaries are pretty uh, pretty big, so you know, if I do just raise the sail a bit, I might have enough time. Or I could just put it in a circle, but then if I put it in a circle, that's going to uh, possibly give the other player a chance to board when it comes back around if he's just swimming around a bit. Lots to think about, but you really can't tell what works and what does until you just get in there and try it. I know that especially from uh, sailing up to people trying to get PvP practice, sailing up to brigs and galleons just shooting a lot of cannonballs at them. A lot of tactics you think wouldn't work, but just kind of end up working because your opponent, um, you always expect them to be perfectly on the ball, right? So if you give them an opportunity where you're vulnerable, you expect to get wrecked, but then much to my surprise, not everybody's on the ball all the time. It takes a lot of communication to run a galleon and a brig, and if they aren't communicating properly and they can't see the opportunities, then uh, sometimes, you know, you can just put yourself in a position where you could get smashed, but then sail right through it, giving yourself the opportunity to attack. So we'll see how things go. But I've been practicing so much with this flintlock that it's like I need to uh, I need to use some of this practice at some point. I wouldn't mind putting together a little bit of a crew. It's getting down to that time, I think. Oh, hey, speaking of rich, speaking of a bit of practice. Look what we have here. It is a sloop with sails. Don't know what kind of sails those are. I think those are those burlap sack sails. He's running uh, gold hoarders. He's got a... Uh, got an allegiance flag up. Looks friendly. Doesn't necessarily mean that he is. Shoot a firework at him. What have I got here for fireworks? Ruby splash tail. Megalodon. Ruby Splash Tail. What do you think, viewers? Stupid or not? Given a perfect cannon angle here. There's a splash tail for you, buddy. Look, it's a fish. That's a nice one, right on. So you got an allegiance flag up there. So you've got your uh, allegiance flag up. 
I'll, uh, I'll raise mine. Hold on one second, sir. A new pirate friend. As long as I don't accidentally smash into him when he boards me. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, I should have signaled. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Excellent. Nice ship. Sorry about that once again. Once again, didn't mean that. <laughs> Oh, hey, I've got uh, Prox Chat muted. I'm actually on a, a live stream right now. You'll have to use text if you if you can. If not, well, sorry about it. Okay, cool. How's it going, man? Got anything to, uh, let me see here. I don't know. Yeah, going pretty good. I'm just running some commodities, as you can see. Just a little commodity barge. I do these uh, five times a week, post them to uh, YouTube. You're going to be in episode uh, 27 if you want to look it up. I think I sold all my supply crates. I'd give you an extra, uh, I got like a wood crate here if you want it. You want a wood crate? Got any opinions? It's uh, called Commodity Run, the Sea of Thieves stream. You just look it up. You type in uh, Sea of Thieves Commodity Run. Uh, episode. Oh, we're gonna hit a rock. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm on Twitch right now, live streaming on Twitch. I post them to uh, post them to YouTube. And check out my Twitch name. Uh, it's exactly the same as my name right now, Super Hogwild. We're live currently. Yeah, yeah, cool. Captain Doby from chat here says, "I hope he's not solo, or his ship might sink out of uh, ram damage." I think you had, uh, I think you had a friend on there, though, right? Should be good. Just looking out for you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. What do you think about uh, what do you think about all those UAPs that got shot down? You think it's aliens? Think it's an alien invasion? What do you think? Got any opinions on that? You don't have to comment, of course, but it's always good. It's always good to get people's opinions. Oh yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I honestly, uh, oh, I have no idea. I have no idea what it is, but it's so bizarre. So bizarre, you know. And that's uh, that's about it for current events. So, so unless you know uh, any other good ones, you know all my coconuts. I got uh, you know I got I got a lot of meat here. You want You want some meat? Nice bird. I uh, didn't mean for that to uh, sound the way it did. <laughs> okay. Where am I at here? I gotta get. Uh, I gotta get one way. This is that island that like looks like you can sail through it, but you absolutely cannot. That is a sandbar. Can't find it. Should be uh, just super hog wild. I don't know. It's all good. I'm just uh, you know I'm just a little guy, man. I just started like a month ago. So I got, uh, what do I got here? Couple of viewers. Yep. 
Small stream, small stream. I got a, a pretty big viewing audience on YouTube, though. The algorithm's been finding me, uh, finding me a lot of people. That's for sure. I got like uh, just clearing 100 watch hours now. So everything's working out good. I gotta grab that chicken before it burns. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite uh, quite impressed. I thought I'd have to do like more advertising and stuff. I just do this as a hobby. Thought it would be uh, thought it would be a good time. It's been an absolute riot so far. But yeah, that algorithm, man. If you just post videos to YouTube, it'll find you people to watch it. It's pretty crazy. Should get another uh, big boost in search impressions pretty soon here. Seems like every uh, well, I mean, I don't know. After the first two weeks, like it used to give me like uh, 13, 14 impressions a video. And then I got uh, got up to 25 watch hours, and it's given me about 300 a video now. So, so I don't know. Maybe it'll give me another kick. We'll see. But I've been having a lot of fun making coin from my uh, dark adventure gear here and whatever. So, so you know, can't complain. Speaking of which, where's my uh, where's my heading gear? We're not anywhere near Plunder Outpost, are we? I probably went too far too far west. Is that another sloop? Yeah, for sure. Thanks for stopping by. Always good to see a friendly face. And uh, good luck to y'all. Don't let the uh, don't let the aliens in. You know, keep that door locked. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. I don't know who that sloop is. Uh oh. Jack Swallows, now. <laughs> that's one of those sloops, of course, where I'm uh, fully expecting maybe a little bit of a. little bit of aggression. A little bit of aggression. A Jack Sparrow. Good grief, man. Good grief. The people who play this game, pirates, all of them. They're all pirates. Unbelievable. Alright, four hours, 24 minutes, a little bit of a diversion there. Now pulling into, uh, well, I mean, we will be eventually now heading into Plunder Outpost, just about there. Just past that, uh, you know, I hate to call it a spire, even though that's what it is. Just under that arc of stone. Good stuff. Glad that guy didn't Shanghai me. I always get a little bit uh, uneasy when people are on my ship. Just keep offering him chicken. Yeah, it's just uh, just past this spire here. Gonna see if I can catch a crosswind. Bada bing, bada boom. God, I still have that book. Uh, 
mean, it should be right behind the spire. Oh yeah, there it is. That's the peak. That's the peak, just peeking out. I forgot to say the thing about liking and subscribing. If you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> ah, it's always so much fun. I was reading some uh, comment chain in Reddit as well. Where everybody was making fun of YouTubers. Where they're like, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ring the bell. Links in the description. I forgot about links in the description. That's something I haven't been saying. I haven't been putting any links in the description though, but I certainly could be. I'm always talking about stupid things I could be linking to. That was funny because, you know, like that Reddit comment thread was supposed to be, uh, supposed to be making fun of YouTubers, but I'm just reading it being like, yes, this is all good. This is good information. Do you have any more of these things I keep forgetting to say? Because, I mean, it sounds stupid, but nobody, nobody liked or subscribed to my channel or any of my videos until I started saying it. So it's very, uh, it's very effective. Once again, I, uh, I appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. Never feel obligated, of course, but but it uh, helps with the search impressions. Builds the community a little bit quicker. Like I said, I'm getting uh, well over, you know, 10, 20, or even 30 times more of the search impressions that I uh, used to get when I started doing this at the very start there. Still not sure how much of that has to do with the uh, content of the video or or even what I have no idea sometimes it'll give me so much off the bat and then in two days it'll give me like another huge bunch it's kind of just up to the whim of the algorithm it's like the algorithms my producer hopefully I don't get cancelled but so far so good that was always the one thing I was kind of going off of I was like well I'll keep doing this as long as it keeps giving me search impressions because I keep getting search impressions then I'll always have uh, new viewers, new viewers trickling in, return, return viewers. But it's uh, actually only been going good, so. So I'll take it as far as I can go. Then when it burns out, it's welcome. I'll change the format, maybe. We'll see. Or I'll do some advertising, too. I talked about that as well. Ancient Spire. Blunder. Really, it's sugar here? Yeah, I guess it was, because this is where I got smashed by a galleon. I remember uh, unloading sugar, so sure, why not? Did you know that uh, streamers have the attention span of a goldfish? There you go. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to miss out on the five crates. <laughs> Captain Dovey says, I hope you spot any Briggy Galleon this time. That was seriously, man, after I checked that footage, that was the most embarrassing part about the whole thing. As stupid as that entire situation was, was that I kept calling it a Brig. Just goes to show you how absolutely brain dead I was when it happened, right? It was like that whole time I was trying to talk about uh, I don't even want to mention it again because I feel like it's one of those terms that tanks the search impressions. Captain Dovey says I saw it coming, getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, when I checked the uh, when I checked the game the game replay or whatever, checked the stream tapes. Man, I was laughing so hard because it's literally like I'm like, where did it come from? I don't know. And then you check it afterwards, and like it's like a Looney Tunes bit. I said I wasn't gonna buy these, but I'm gonna buy them, whatever. It's like a Looney Tunes bit. Every time I pass it with a crate full of sugar, it just gets bigger and bigger until it's like most of the friggin' horizon when I pass it the last time. Oh well, that's the way it goes. And I didn't even check the horizon once when I sailed in, but once I get on some of those topics... Again, if you dare. I was all nervous about like accidentally digging myself into a hole. 
saying something that I would regret. But I listened to it. I think I, I think I handled it tactfully. Anyways, it was funny though, cause I had uh, somebody liked that video, and then like three days later, they they took away their like. And so it's like, oh shoot, maybe they got to like a part of the video that they disagreed with and like, you know what? I can't like this one in, in good conscience. I can't like it, but hey, whoever that was, I just want to tell you, uh, thanks for like not disliking it. I don't even <laughs> want to put that thought into people's mind, man. I don't know what that would do. Probably wouldn't do much. Probably wouldn't do much. That'll be the day where all my videos start getting dislikes. Uh, uh. Please don't do that, even as, even as a joke. You don't need to uh, stomp this out before it even begins, man. Let the fire burn. Let it burn. Yeah, I shouldn't even. Uh, shouldn't even have brought that up. Shouldn't even have brought that up, man. But that was uh, that was absolutely hilarious. Watch out, there's Briggs with kegs out there, man. Galleons too, apparently. It was a good episode though. It's always good footage uh, shooting fireworks at people. This one turned out pretty good as well. I don't really have like a lot to say this stream. I always try to, uh, always try to keep it going, but There's just like, kind of depends on what's on my mind at the time, right? When I do these, and I just don't really have like anything on my mind right now. If that uh, makes any sense, so I guess it's kind of a good thing, right? Keep it clean. It's just like a wind tunnel up in my brain. But I'll be honest, the only thing I'm really thinking about is those uh, those UAPs they shot down, man. Even though I know that there's not really going to be any statement, they're like they're not going to say anything. They're saying they probably can't even um, get the wreckage now, which is like ridiculous. But it's like ah, whatever, man. I don't like. Um, how do I put this? Uh, I trust in the government. I know that they're all like corrupt and everything. I don't trust them like that way. But you know, I I just trust that like we got the best and brightest people working on it, whoever they are. And it's just obviously, uh, it's out of our hands, man. Sometimes when it's like, when there's nothing you can do about something, it's really tough to actually like worry about it. Cause it's like, it's got nothing to do with me. But um, yeah, it will be interesting to see if the full story ever comes out, what the deal with that was. I feel like they kind of need to make up some sort of a story. Cause as it stands, like that's the only thing that concerns me, man. Is like, I don't want to live in, in a day and age where the government can just like shoot some things down and be like, oh, we have no idea what they were and we never will. And it's like, why'd you shoot them down? Like, what are you, like, what are you doing, man? Maybe just like, just follow them around for a bit and identify them, take some pictures. I know they're in like commercial airspace, but like, could you throw a net over them or something? Or I don't know what. It would be really, really, really hilariously funny if they actually were, like the two uh, cylindrical shaped ones in the Yukon and Alaska, if they actually were like UAPs, and it was literally just a case of the Chinese spy balloon got caught by like civilian reporters, and then they had to shoot it down, and then they did a briefing with uh, Biden, and they're like, yeah, so there's these other things flying around as well, and it's going to shoot them down too. It's like, uh, but they been there for literally 25 years. It's not shooting down. We gotta shoot everything down now. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go through a media shitstorm again. Just shoot. Shoot them all down. Shoot everything down. Shoot everything down, even if we know what it is or it isn't. And then they just did, and that's it. Like that's all that went on. I think that would be pretty wild. There is also, of course. I mean, I did a pretty big. Uh, oh, Athena's fortune flag. It's, it's all shiny. I did a pretty big spiel on it at the start of the video. Like I always do. The first, uh, you know, hour and a half at least is always pretty, pretty packed full of content, anyways. But it's like, 
doing five of these at five and a half hours each, it's like, what are you really going to expect four hours into the video? Sometimes, like, we have a lot of really crazy discussions and it keeps going, but sometimes it's like, hey, I'm just chilling on a boat tonight, you know? We're just chilling on a boat. Let's just chill out. Doesn't always have to get so, uh, so crazy all the time, you know? You don't always have to be talking about, like, uh, crazy philosophy and world history. It's on my mind, I will, but just hasn't been lately. I guess I'm just, like, you know, personally, uh, kind of content. Things are, uh, I don't know, things are pretty cool. Pretty awful world news lately, but... You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Captain Dovey says, now if it happens again, you throw a blunder bomb at that keg and get a three for one kill and a chance to get away. I thought about that in hindsight, where it was like, yeah, the only thing I could have done was huck a blunder bomb at the keg. The thing was, is like, from the time it took me to spot the keg to the time it was already under the deck, it was like, I just saw the guy go on the deck and then under, man. It was like a two second exchange. I'm not that uh, not that quick, but you'll bet if it happens again, I'll have that blunder bomb in my hand. You saw me take it out, but by the time I took it out, I was like, yeah, moment's kind of lost. But definitely, I, I, it's like those split-second decisions, you know? You just only have a moment to decide what the right thing to do is. I uh, I thought about hucking it, and then I also I, I second-guessed myself because I was like, well, if I detonate the keg, then my sloop's absolutely done too but you're absolutely right it would have got a three to one kill my sloop would have been filling up with water but the anchor was up so I could have just dropped sail and kind of squeezed out of there while they were all uh, spawning back in and then I could have just uh, patched those holes on the go if I could have made it around this corner you know that's kind of a, a weird area but I could have done it Captain Dolby says you can detonate them through floors with a blunder bomb I think pretty sure you can I'd have to agree with that, given the uh, the physics of the blunder bomb. They seem to pass through ship hulls quite easily, so they probably would be able to pass through a deck as well. <laughs> Captain Dovey says, well, you would have lost your mast, but they have a, a load respawn time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, with the mast down, I mean, I don't know. By the time I would have gotten the mast back up, I feel like the thing would have uh, filled full of water as well. But you'll miss every shot you don't take. I should have uh, Wayne gretzky would it. You know? Just done my best. Done my best. Still in this? Yes, I'm still in this. Oh, got a ship with the Reaper's mark. Usually that just means they're friendly, I think. They just want everybody to see where they are so they can make as many friends as possible. It's only kind of a joke, sometimes that's the case. It certainly was on Community Day, on uh, Bizarro Day. Man, that was like just an acid trip of a ride. It was so weird. So weird, man. Felt like I was in uh, Wonderland. It's funny, too, because even though, like, it wasn't like people couldn't attack me. It's still allowed. You can still shoot cannonballs. You can still shoot people with your sword. I mean, gun. Gun shoot bullets, not swords. Hogwild. Come on, figure this out. But, uh, you know, the whole thing is like, I just felt absolutely no concern whatsoever from anybody I sailed up to. It was like, everybody's friendly today. Unbelievable. All it would take was one person to ruin the whole thing. Didn't run into them, though. I had just, like, complete trust in everybody. It was a weird feeling. It made me uncomfortable. No, I'm just kidding. It was cool. That was cool, but like I said, if the game was like that every night, I probably wouldn't uh, probably wouldn't play it as much as I have been. It's all about that uncertainty, you know. Keeps it exciting. Minerals, 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 minerals. 
spices. Spices to spices. Four hours, 40 minutes into this journey. Coming into Ancient Spire, work we started from originally. I'll definitely be taking this to Moro's Peak for an extra port. And then I'll, uh, I'll catch the wind, we'll see, I mean, I feel like maybe, well, I don't know. It doesn't really make up for uh, messing up the stream yesterday, but. Because, you know, whether I release a video and it's five hours or six and a half hours long, I don't feel like it makes that big of a difference. But we might be able to get a couple of extra uh, firework shots in there. Jeez, I wish these uh, stream markers worked. But they just don't. Captain Toby says the fireworks thing is extracurricular, but one has to wonder if it should be a part of your footage. Yeah, I'm doing it from now on every stream. After doing it in the Community Day stream, dude, it's 100% worth the 20,000 coin. Because it's like... <laughs> Captain Toby says trying to taunt folk with fireworks and having nobody bite in the game that's supposed to be full of cutthroats. Did you watch the one from Sunday? Because I shot I shot the fireworks of the one guy, Dagger Tooth. And they were chill, and then they followed me around and were like shooting at me and stuff afterwards. I was like, oh, okay, these guys don't like it. And then there was that breakdown at Plunder Outpost that I shot fireworks at the first loop around. And it was, uh, they had the Dutch flag up. I think I think they probably were Dutch because the guy said, said something in Dutch. But he was saying like a bunch of other stuff, man. About like, uh, you know, skinning me alive and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Captain Domi says, I saw some brick talking about skating you or somebody alive. Yeah, it, it, he mentioned my family. It was, like, really not cool. It was really dark. But um, they shot up a white flare, so it must have been good, right? I didn't think they'd be friendly, but, uh, yeah, I think what it was is it was probably one guy messing around with his crew. I mean, I know he's, he's probably talking to me, but he's probably just, like, I don't know. I noticed that when I pulled the ship. I was parked at the Sovereign Dock, and then he started saying that stuff, and I was like, yeah, maybe I won't actually hang out here while these guys are talking about skinning me. And then, uh, as soon as I sailed out, and I was in range of their broadside again, the other crew member kept doing the watch out emote. So I feel like they may have been, like, an open crew or something. Maybe they weren't on, um, they weren't on chat with each other. I have no idea. But they sailed away without incident, so... So far, it's been good. Another thing, too, is, is, like, on Sunday's video, or no, wait, on Tuesday's video that I messed up, I had my audio muted for, like, an hour and a half, and then I just ditched it. Um, I wasn't going to actually shoot fireworks at anybody unless they were a sloop, because, you know, when you sail that close to a brig or a galleon, and they catch a little bit of wind, they can uh, catch up to you quite quickly. I just can't help myself. It's either that, like, what am I going to do? Am I going to sail into a port and shoot fireworks at a ship? Or am I going to go hide behind an island and fish for 10 minutes? Like, I just can't, uh, I can't do it anymore, man. I can't fish anymore. If I've got fireworks on board, I'm shooting fireworks at that ship in port. Like, it's just too much fun, and it makes for great footage, so. So it's definitely going to be a regular thing from now on. Uh, speaking of which, it's not quite nighttime yet, but what else do we got here? We got a shark. I like this crab one for some reason. That thing's hilarious. The pig one in the other crate was good. I'll check out this Megalodon one. I'll wait till the sun goes down, though. It's almost uh, almost sunset. Then I'll, of course, uh, I'll set the rest of them off uh, when it gets dark because they look nicer. That brig, man, on Tuesday, that was the, the whole reason. I basically rage quit because I was like, oh, it was such good footage. It was that brig called the Drippin' Wet. I think we saw that before, too. And that's one of those names that's like, pretty sure he was going to be hostile, but I sailed in, shot fireworks at him, and he dropped sails and just sailed away so fast downwind. And then I pulled away and uh, sailed upwind into a storm, and he didn't follow me. So I guess I spooked him bad enough that he just, like, didn't want any of it. But he was parked at the Sovereign Dock, so I think he was probably just trying to make his final sail for the night, and everybody's adrenaline is really, uh, really high. Captain Doby says, you can escape a galleon against the wind, but against a brig, don't bother. A sloop speed bonus against the wind is minimal versus a brig, really tiny. That's absolutely what I've noticed. I have gotten in enough galleon chases to know, but I have tried to escape uh, that one brig in run number one at the end, the first time I sank on stream there. That brig, I tried to sail away from it upwind for like, oh, dude, 20 minutes. 20 minutes, and you don't gain, like, 
you gain nothing and you have to be directly upwind so you can't maneuver at all. It's impossible. You try to run them into rocks or whatever, you can't do it because as soon as you turn uh, diagonal against the wind, then they actually start to get an advantage against you the more you're, uh, you're off. So for instance, like this, like if I was sailing into the wind, right, in my sloop at this angle, they'd have a speed advantage against me because I'm like 45 into it instead of directly against it. So brigs are a little bit sketchy, but they're also fun to run into the islands because like with that sail down, unless they have the DA sails, they can't see anything. So it's like, ha ha ha. Captain Toby says, and yes, you have to be direct against the wind versus a brig even a few degrees to the side and they're faster. Yep, absolutely. Learned that the hard way. <laughs> Not on stream, but... But, uh... That was in one of those test streams. A brig uh, caught up to me a couple times, harpooned me. I ended up shaking him off. And that's when I was like, yeah, this could definitely work. Because I went out to film some test footage. I was like, is there really any content if I just go sail uh, commodities around and then... Sure enough, I shook a brig off three times and chased me, and I was like, yeah, this this is a good format. It'll work. And then here we are on run number 27, and I haven't had another brig chase me the whole time, except those uh, sea hobo guys. Which, that was good footage. Can't deny that. Can't deny that, but... It's tough. It's tough, you know, because I want to get, like, more footage with that, but you can't, like... You can't really get into those situations on purpose, because... If you sail up to a brig trying to antagonize them into uh, chasing after you. For one, I've come to realize that anybody who doesn't aggro as soon as they see you generally doesn't want to fight themselves. Uh, they'll actually try to avoid you as much as possible. And then, on top of that, it's like your real only chance to evade a brig is to use whatever distance you've got when they start chasing you. So if you sail right up to them to antagonize them, with cannons or with uh, fireworks or whatever, then they decide to chase after you. It might just get, be game over really quick because of how close you are. So it's tough trying to uh, to figure out who to approach and who not to approach. But now that I've got these fireworks and I'm just such a you know such a child with them, like a child in a fireworks shop, I just can't help but sail up to everybody and just try to shoot them right onto their deck. It's like the one thing I notice with that brig is that like. I think that, like I said, if you shoot the fireworks at them and you manage to get it to, sh to land right over their mast so it like shoots all the fireworks onto their deck, I think it spooks them a lot more than if you shoot it overhead. Because if you shoot it overhead, it seems like more of a more of a friendly thing, but if you shoot them onto their deck, it seems like more of a, hey, what's up, I have cannon angle on you, but I didn't take the shot because I'm such a hot shot, I didn't even need it. I'd rather just spook you with fireworks instead. It seems like it communicates a little bit different of a message when it happens. Captain Doby says that ship needs a massive rebalance. It's faster than you with only the back sail down. Oh, really? And it's about the same with only the front. Man, that's crazy. Because, yeah, they catch a crosswind, you're you're just toast. Like, that sh the brigs are so fast. So, so, so unbelievably fast. I feel like a brig is probably, probably the best ship when it comes to, like, uh, overall balance in uh, PvP. Because, yeah, you get the extra guy in a galleon, and you get the extra... You get an extra cannon? What's a brig got? Two cannons? But it's like... Yeah, so you get the four cannons on the galleon, but... You never really use them unless the guy jumps off the helm. And then the whole thing about the galleon, as we all know, because of the three layers, the time it takes you to bail water out of the bottom, if you get even more than a couple of holes down there, um, you're going to have to call an extra crew member to help bail as you patch anyways. The bright side, of course, being that, yeah, you got to call an extra crew member, but at the same time, if you're if you're patching and someone's bailing, then you're practically invincible anyway, so I don't know. It's kind of a neck-and-neck neck thing, but you'd think for a ship that gives you an extra crew member, it would have a lot more of an advantage over a brig, but I feel like they're, they kind of come out being the same in the end. Especially, too, the other thing is, like, if you get uh, boarded on a galleon, man, there's so many places the guy can run around and hide, jump behind the tables, light the bottom deck on fire. Like, it's really quite vulnerable to, uh, to 
being lit on fire, that's for sure. Hello, my lovely. Goodbye, my oh, lovely. am I? I didn't load those. Are we waiting? Good grief. We did it. We did it, team. Gotta wait three minutes. First port I've had to wait out. Yeah, that's all right. For some reason, I expected it to be like, uh, like on the firework, it looks like it's an open mouth, but then it's just like a shark in the sky. Sky shark. Yeah, see, it's like an open mouth. That crab one's pretty accurate. Ruby splash tail one's cool. What's the shark look like if that's the case? That's like almost the same as the Megalodon. I think it had a cooler splash though. That's cool, I like it. I'll end up uh, checking out all these fireworks. Buy a different one each stream. I figure it fits in perfectly cause like I'm making uh, so much money consistent doing these anyways that I might as well spend 20k on a firework crate every time. Little extra content. Little extra content. So yeah, silks should be uh, should be time. Another thirty seconds. Yep. So how about uh, how about that? Their Super Bowl. God, it's so funny. Like, nobody cares anymore. Nobody cares, man. Captain Doby says, could always use a C4 to get your fireworks if you want to save some gold. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I've been doing those, uh, doing those C forts to practice with the old, uh, you know, the old flintlock shooting some phantoms. Yeah, they got six or seven. Six or seven up there. Cannibal. Cannibal. Remain stoic, please. You're frightening the audience. Hello, dearie. Good old stone. So we're sitting here at uh, four hours, 53 minutes into this journey, stocking up at stone, that ancient spire. Going to be sailing over east to Moros Peak. Probably on up to Galleon's Grave as well. I mean, wind or not, it's uh, early enough. I want to end this one around the six hour mark. No later than that though, six hours is perfect time. So in another hour, I mean, I might be able to get over to, uh... well, you know what? I think probably what it'll be is it'll be Dagger Tooth. Dagger Tooth is close enough to Sanctuary. I mean, I'd go over to Golden Sands if it made sense, but if I cash out a dagger tooth, then I don't have to load up a dagger tooth. So bye bye, there's always that advantage. Loading a dagger tooth is uh, the least fun of any of the spots. I'm just going to uh, also just double check. Get this anchor up. You know what, Mildred calls me lovely. I take back everything bad I've ever said about Mildred. She's the nicest. See what I'm saying, senior trader, chief trader? It's like you're the only trader on the island, so uh, what exactly does that, uh, does that rank compare yourself against? I feel like they all get together at a board meeting, like once a year. They sit at a round table, and they're like, well, as the senior trader, I believe we should do this. Yes, but I'm the chief trader. Yes, but I'm the trader in charge. I gotta check, uh, gotta check the rest of those titles now. Perfect. Good 
Oops. Yeah, it's too bad, uh, like, running into Xbox people, I guess they probably, they probably can't use text chat. I mean, some of them might have a keyboard installed, but... Probably more people than I think, actually. It's always good. Always good to have a US keyboard, USB keyboard, if you're playing Xbox games. Like, especially, uh, you know, you go on Elder Scrolls Online and everybody's got one plugged in, obviously. That game's pretty hilarious. It'd be nice if I could just, uh, just turn the prox chat on, man. But I don't want to risk it. I don't want to have a whole video tainted. Even though I'm pretty sure that probably a lot of the things that would get you banned from Twitch are probably the same things that would get you banned from prox chat in Sea of Thieves. But once again, I really don't understand how those prox chat bans work in Sea of Thieves. Like, do they actually have, uh people listening in or what's going on. I don't even know where you would report something like that. Anyways, four hours, 56 minutes into this journey. Now sailing east. Up, up, and away. Hopefully I don't run into any problems. It's gonna be the last three ports, I think. Should take about an hour to do three ports, I guess, if it takes uh, two and a half to do seven. That seems to make sense. The math works out on that. Thinking this will come out to uh, five hours, 45 minutes. As long as there are no catastrophic happenings of any sort, of course. Guess I should get these crates organized as well. Yeah, it's crazy, I'll tell you, man. Like, I try to make an effort when I'm browsing the internet to uh, write down some notes for, uh, you know, content for the stream. If I see some cool stuff. I'll talk about it or whatever. But yeah, these last like four days, ever since those balloons got shot down, it seems like there's just nothing, nothing going on. The internet has been dry. I can't even find like a show to watch on Netflix or Amazon Prime. And I hate to, I hate to even admit that because it's embarrassing. It's like, there's so many programs on there, but it's like, I just cannot, uh, can't get into any of it. I think probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch the rest of Stone Ocean, but uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. Even though I'm like, not even really in the mood for it, but I'll watch the rest of it. I hear the, the rest of it's supposed to be, supposed to be the best. It gets better as it goes along. It's already pretty good. Like I said, I'm just not really into, uh, not really into the whole prison thing. I think it would have been a better, uh, better part if it wasn't in prison, because you know, prison isn't very fun for anybody, viewers included. I feel just my uh, humble opinion. We'll see. I think what I'm probably gonna have to do. I mean, if it gets uh, <laughs> if it gets this dry, I mean, I do uh, I do take pride in my my hobby here. I like to make these videos as entertaining as possible, given the format. But you know, if the news aggregate sites are gonna be uh, are gonna be dry for this long at a time, I don't mind having a couple of a couple of chill uh, chill streams. I mean, it's it's perfectly fine. I know people don't mind as well. It's not like people are clapping their hands, being like, "Hey." Huck wealth, come on. Say something funny, man. I don't know, maybe they are. If you are, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe on uh, YouTube. Leave a comment. That helps as well. Comments, uh, comments push it in the algorithm just as much. You got any media, uh, media recommendations, especially if it's on Netflix or Prime? Recommend it in the comments. I'll watch it. I'll talk about it. Or whatever, you know, how that goes. I guess I could have talked about the Matrix Resurrections. I said I was going to talk about that movie. Um, but it also kind of depends on my state of mind whether I can remember what the heck it was I was going to talk about. I guess so I got to put it in the notes. Got to put it in the old episode notes. But anyways, point being, I'm a pretty resourceful dude. So I think what it might come down to is I'll have to find a way to... I'll uh, have to find a way to find content that isn't like just already out there because it's one thing to you know go on reddit and just power scroll reddit looking for uh, entertainment it's kind of what i do every morning anyways so it's like not that big of a deal for me to throw some notes in so i can bring some stuff up later when i am streaming but like yeah there's just been nothing nothing or of course you know sometimes you just get those days where it's nothing but like the weirdest most depressing content ever so I feel like that's part of my service, is putting on a hazmat suit and submerging myself into the garbage sludge and finding the diamonds in the rough, bringing them here. Because I know not everybody is a power browser as well. But I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to start uh, going above and beyond, going to uh, first party sources, you know. I'm going to have to go to uh, go to the places that the news comes from, instead of going to the news aggregate. Um, even going to, like, company websites, man. Seeing what kind of, kind of, uh, what they're saying firsthand, instead of waiting for somebody else to report on it. I mean, I'm sure there's probably got to be something worth talking about. I just got to get uh, better at my, better at my hobby here. We'll see, you know, if I can get enough notes for an episode. Just kind of like doing what I usually do, then that's easy for me. I'll stick to that, but if the news is seriously going to dry up for a couple of weeks, every time they shoot down a friggin' party balloon, then it's like, yeah, I'll just find uh, other places, other places to get some entertainment. I'm going to just take a quick look over on this side, do a quick horizon check. That's a cool sound. I'd go uh, all hardcore into philosophy and stuff again, but if I'm not in the mood, I'm not in the mood. There's no point trying to fake it. Gotta be in one of those uh, deep thought, deep thought moves. I certainly don't want, like, man, that Sunday episode where I was all talking about, like, that can cancel car culture. Cancel culture stuff, man. I don't want every episode to be like that. That stuff gets kind of heavy sometimes. It's good to have, like, a little bit of a, a history lesson and some musings. Because I hadn't thought about that Kane and Lynch thing and all that stuff. And those subreddits and everything. And it's like, how did they start, man? And it's all because of, uh... Because of everything I talked about there. So that was cool. That was fun, but... I don't know. I could do that uh, every episode. I'd like to keep it. Uh, I'd like to keep it light, a little lighthearted most of the time. You know, that's the way streams are. So, anyways, Moro's Peak. <laughs> so, anyways, here's Wonderwall. Does anybody even play Wonderwall anymore, or is that like great day is that just gone? Business. Nobody plays Wonderwall anymore. I haven't heard somebody uh, play Wonderwall after saying, "Anyways, here's Wonderwall" in a long time. Times change, man. Never thought Wonderwall would go out of style. Just kidding. Wasn't really ever in style. I actually heard a busker playing Wonderwall one time, and I was like, what a stereotype. Hurry up. Hurry up with the goods. Funny talking about cutthroats. Game full of cutthroats, man. I seriously did not realize how chill 
everybody in this game is. Like I said, I kind of feel like um, Keep turning the wheels of commerce. I accidentally exposed Sea of Thieves. The seedy underbelly of Sea of Thieves. Everybody thinks it's all just like a bunch of hardcore PvPers and cutthroats. And then I come out here and I'm like, how about I just sell some crates around and see what happens? And it's like, oh, everybody's actually just trying to like do their own uh, voyages. And like nine out of 10 ships is full of like friendly people and like families and uh, new players. It's actually like one of the chillest games in existence. It's great, I've been having a fun time. Still kind of itching for an opportunity to use uh, use the old flintlock since I've been practicing so much, but hey, careful, careful what you wish for, right? I know I'll get an opportunity. I ain't gonna stop practicing either. I can never be too good. Uh, speaking of being too good, what am I? What am I selling here? Minerals, all right. I'll have to do uh, have to do a lot of hourglass PvP. I guess I can do that tomorrow. It just makes me so uh, makes me nervous, man. Going into uh, <laughs> going into PvP like deliberate PvP as a solo slooper. I just feel like I'm just setting myself up to get annihilated. But it's the only way to learn, really. Like I said, I got to find out how to. How I could get an advantage and how to push that advantage. But it's mostly just, um, you know, land and cannon shots, I think. And then repelling borders with blunder bombs. And, uh, the blunder bus. And then pushing the advantage as the borders are either dead or swimming in the water. But I practice so much with the flintlock, and it's not, uh, that's not gonna let me use the flintlock if I fight like that. That's the only thing. It's like, the only real, real time I'm ever gonna get to use the pistol as a solo slooper is when I've already effed up pretty bad. So. Still a really important thing, though, to be able to, uh, take control of that situation if it ever happens. Somebody's on board. Okay, so that was uh, minerals. Got to make sure that I got all the minerals sold here. And then next stop's going to be Galleon's Grave up north. Look at that. I got wind. I even got the wind I wanted. Too much good luck, man. Man and or lady who may be present watching this video. crates organized uh what's galleon grave gonna be stone yeah okay We got a reasonable amount of stone this time. Yeah, that's the correct amount of stone, not the wrong amount of stone, which is good. Oh, we even got uh, extra supplies in there, huh? Right on. <laughs> they added that little thing where you can press the button to transfer supplies between crates, the barrels and whatever, but still can't get a buy all button. How rare? Still can't get a buy all button. It's 
terrible. Check out one of these. Lost Seafarer. Probably like the other shooting star one, but it's blue, is my guess. Yep. Those ones aren't very good for scaring people. I like the ones that uh, explode into a bunch of pieces. Those are great. Great for spooking, spooking port. Port pirates. We'll start calling them port pirates. Get out of the port, man. <laughs> if only these people knew. If only they knew. Sitting in port for 15 minutes, it's like, come on. Just, just get out. Get out of the port, man. I wonder how many runs into this until I just completely lose my mind and start shooting cannonballs at people in port. Probably never, okay? Because I have amazing, amazing self-control. I've only ever, uh, only ever really lost it maybe that one time. Almost lost it, maybe that other time as well, but that's pretty good. Two times in uh, however many hours we're going on here. 200, and, I mean 100 and 120, 130, 135 after this one, plus whatever scraps. Guess I'll take a quick check for Reapers. I'm um, ending a dagger tooth, so it doesn't concern me at all. Wouldn't concern me even if I was ending at Sanctuary. I'd just sail up to him and shoot fireworks up his ship. All up in his ship. Get all up in his ship with my fireworks. Well, that'll be Galleon's grave right there. Little heading correction. Selling stone, and I'll have to make sure to get rid of the tea as well. Depending on how much I have on board, which... Uh, it's actually a little bit. Especially this one, trying to be a spice, trying to sneak in with the spices.
Ancient Spire would have been the start as well. Thanks for the follow there, viewer. Uh, I'm not going to read your name out unless you want me to say something in the chat. Be immortalized. But appreciate that. I can't help but uh, can't help but thank people. I didn't one time and I felt really bad afterwards. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you know how things are around here. I respect the lurking. Feel free to hang out, anybody, as long as you want. I actually don't even, uh, I don't even have my viewer counter on. I got it removed. Because it's too distracting. Too distracting when it goes up and then you say something stupid and like all the live audience disconnects and you're like, oh, whoops. Shouldn't have said that. Even though it's got like absolutely nothing to do with what I say, it's just like, man, people got things to do. They come, they go, they stop in, they leave. And another thing too is like, I used to have a problem when it was turned on that uh, anytime the view counter would go up, and I'd look at it, I'd be like, oh, I'd feel like compelled to do like a total recap of the entire stream and my uh, entire entire channel in general. Because they're like, oh, somebody new is here. So I have to mention everything I've ever mentioned up until this single point. So yeah, I find it uh, I find it easier to just turn it off and then I just check it. I just check it in post. It tells you, uh, tells you all the view numbers afterwards so I can see how things went in review. I so desire to. What do we got on the dock here? Oh my goodness, it's a... It's a bunch of silks. Bunch of silks in a box. Silks in the box. Guess there's another merchant about. Gonna have a merchant duel. Oh, speaking of merchant duels. I know all these barrels at this point. <laughs> I gotta, uh, I gotta turn around, but like. Yeah, a little, little paranoid. A little paranoid, maybe. Second to last port. Getting there. Wonder how long that hole's been there. It's interesting. Probably uh, just made it. There'd be a lot more water in the hull, probably, if that was the case. Is that a sloop? Oh, it's a brig. Seems like I've got an awful lot of crates on board still as well. I guess this uh, stone will be gone, but I'll also be uh, stocking up on silk, so who knows. I've also thought about that as well, you know, just hitting a couple of extra ports at the end to uh, sell the goods in the right spots. Because even that could add a couple of uh, couple of numbers on the bottom line then at the end without actually taking too much time since it seems to be most of my time is spent loading and unloading. Well, 20% of the time. I kind of did the math there on the other stream. So it's not like most of my time, but could save. Could save a lot. You never know. This is, uh, this is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I'm better than this, I swear. I swear, I swear, this is run number 27. Third time's a charm, though. I'll just swing it back. There we go. This is about as, as good as you can hope for. Except, like, come on. I'll leave it down. That brig ain't going anywhere. Get this stone off the deck. Captain. 
Count those coins, take your time. Should have made timestamps for all those ships I shot fireworks at as well. Usually I can uh, remember. Oh, that dog scared me again. Usually I can remember. Uh, can remember pretty clearly, man. My mind's not like it's not working tonight. Wonder what's up with that. Dehydrated, maybe. Until next time, Captain. It's all starting to blend together. Oh, yeah, this is gonna work. I mean, it must be dehydration. Look at how I parked. It's unbelievable. ain't bad. Missed it. Timing issue. Skill issue. skill issue. Looks like this is going to come in right exactly at the time I thought it would. As long as I don't keep doing that. It's going to be uh, 5 hours 45 minutes probably. We're sitting at uh, 5 hours 23 right now. I feel like that's uh, that's the perfect time for me. Anywhere between five and a half and six hours. Anything less than five and a half hours, I actually walk away feeling like, I don't know, not satisfied. Last time I'm gonna park like an idiot though, that's for sure. It's just too bad the shipwright is here, so it's hard to uh, pull the ship in snug. Oh, this is what I should have been doing. There you go, speaking of shipwrights. I'm evolving. The captain is learning. He's becoming smarter. All right, last crate of stone, then I'm going to get rid of this tea because surprise twist. I still have enough of a brain to remember that I said I had to do that. And check this audio as well, it's been enough time. It's interesting though that I feel like uh, I feel like I've had better luck with the audio. It hasn't run out of sync in a long time. I've forgotten to uh, resync it a couple of times there for three or four hours. And it was still fine. Usually that's all it takes to run out. But that first stream I did 6 hours 15 minutes and that didn't run out the whole time. So who knows. 
Who knows? It might have to do with the uh, phases of the moon, for all I know. Funny too, because I will have gotten a tea crate from here as well, but whatever. I hear splashing. Can't sell it at this spot, I got it though. <laughs> Man, that would be insane if you could do that. Okay, so that should be it. Yeah, this tea crate of tea. I'm not going to be able to sell this here right now. Okay. Forget about that then. I'll just fall in the water one more time. Then it'll be set and sail. Heading, uh, heading west to Daggertooth. To make the final sail for the night. Sell this wood crate here. Hold on to those fireworks, gonna shoot the rest of those off. That's that. That's that. Heading on east. Heading on east to Dagger Tooth. I mean west. West is uh west is the direction I meant. And that's it. We're at uh, 5 hours 28 minutes into this journey. So once I get uh, all this loot unloaded at Dagger Tooth, that'll bring us. That'll bring us pretty close to the 6 hour mark, we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll use the harpoons. Things are uh, feeling pretty safe out there. There's that one brig. I forgot I got that footage of that brig flying around, too. Oh, there's no hackers in Sea of Thieves, eh? I guess everybody kind of knows that by now, but it's funny to just catch one in the act. Unless, of course, you know, it could have been a graphical glitch or something else, who knows. He was pretty far away, but... It's funny, I gotta make a note of that so I don't forget and post. Didn't get a timestamp. Timestamps are busted, but eh, whatever. Okay. Onward. Straight west. Dagger tooth. And I'll get all this loot into the uh, middle, middle of the ship here. It's usually what works best. Captain Doby says, probably just the game. I've seen ships bouncing in the distance. Also, Reaper's hideout, funnily enough. Yeah, this one was like. Man, it was ripping it though. It went from uh, it went from one side to the other, and then he was in the air for a bit, like buzzing around, and then he landed in an island. So I I don't know. It could have just been a glitch. Captain Toby says maybe Reapers is where the toga parties are. Yeah, I'll figure it out someday. That'd be funny if uh, Rare added a toga cosmetic. They totally should, man. I'd buy it. I'd buy that for three dollars. Somebody just wearing like the, it'd have to be like the uh, color of the silks as well. When you carry a silk crate, how it's like bright yellow, bright blue, and bright green, or whatever. Then we 
we could have our own toga parties. What it should be is you should be able to take a crate full of silks and uh, bust it open into a toga. For International Toga Day. Every day is International Toga Day, just in case uh, any of you viewers are wondering. Could you imagine if this is how I organize my crates normally? Just like this, and then every time we pulled into a port, I had to dig through all those crates just to find the right ones. Wow, what a stream that would be. Oh. Oh, that's the port. I had me kind of wondering if I was going the right way because of that uh, port skull there. I think I see an extra mast in Daggertooth as well. Mm -hmm. That fellow with the Reaper's Mark, it'd be kind of a kind of an awkward part of the stream to get chased around. Nope, it's clear enough. I just go sail off to uh, sail off to the friend. The Alliance ship. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Gonna take points off my license. No, it's just one of the regular pulls. I thought that might have been an extra mask. Not the case. more up here on the back flat. Guess I could probably leave those where they were. I think I could hit these uh, harpoon just as easily. But at least I'll know for sure if they're down here. I'm not going to uh, crash into dagger tooth, am I? I wish that active fort wasn't so close either, because, you know, somebody, uh, I don't know. They might decide to come cash out at Daggertooth when they're done, but at least it's easy to know how long it's going. Trying not to hit every rock in the sea on the way out here. It's funny how these streams went from uh, me being like, yeah, I don't know if I'll like make a full run without getting attacked, to me just like sailing by everybody and shooting fireworks at them constantly. <laughs> 
I don't know. I just don't know anymore. Gonna have to take, uh, take rare to court. Your game advertises a sea of thieves. It seems like nothing but a sea of Steves. Nothing but friendship. I was promised uh, murderous cutthroats. Yeah, this might work. I'm gonna pull the front over to the side. Now that I said that, of course, I'm probably gonna get shanghaied by a brig as I try to unload. It's just gonna come blind around the corner. further ahead probably work better. Create a fireworks, hold on to that for the time being. I guess I can empty that into the uh, into the thing. I always forget about that. Perfect. Put that with the rest of the loot pile. Okay, should be pretty chill back here as well. Oh, did that? Oh, pff, okay, there it is. <laughs> it's like, what? Just that one Reaper ship, I don't know. I should have this uh, unloaded before they decide to come over here and get fireworks shot at them anyways. Just going to, uh, you know, check the, uh, <laughs> check the front. It's all good. Brought it a little bit over to the side, but still quicker than hand bombing them. As soon as I get that uh, dark adventure hall paint, I'm gonna want to be putting a fresh coat on every time. I'm a little paranoid, what's up? That's Cannonball trying to negotiate better price as always. 
No such luck so far. Maybe someday. Someday your bargaining abilities will get better, little buddy. Can't complain about the price I'm getting anyways. It's unbelievable. Out there. Five hours, 43 minutes into this run. It's gonna come out uh, right at the time I thought it would. Well, somebody rips around that corner just now. Captain Doby says 441k. Well, I would agree, but I'm actually gonna say uh, 405,000. I had some accidents early on that uh, you might not have been here for. I'm only technically doing uh, two ports fast as well. Not three or four, so. I'm guessing, I'm guessing 405. Yeah, I may have sold some good in some wrong places. I'm a professional. It was, uh, I think it was minerals, so it was, you know, one of the pricier ones. No, what would it have been? No, it was the T. Never mind, that's not that big of a deal. That and plus it's only, uh, 15, 16, 17 ports or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking probably 405. I didn't sink any skelly sloops or anything either, so... I have an extra wood crate or two that I found, so I don't know, maybe that might add to it, but I have a feeling that selling that tea in the wrong spot probably messed up my emissary. Oh yeah, Cam Doby says you did get some sales from your alliance. Yeah, I forgot about that. Eh, not a whole lot, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe it'll turn out to be more than I thought.
Looks like somebody forgot to straighten out the wheel on the ship. It wasn't me. Oh. That's it? That's it? Take one last look around the ship. Actually, it is straight. Okay, never mind. Take one last look around the ship, see if I missed anything. I think it's just these garbage storage crates. Then I'll lower the emissary flag. Do the outro, and then we're going to uh, shoot the rest of these fireworks off. Not at anybody in particular. It is noon, so it won't be dark out, but eh, hey, whatever. Still looks cool, still looks cool. Could sail up to that Reaper, shoot them at the Reaper. <laughs> uh, that's all right though, I'll just uh, I'll just set them off here outside of the dagger tooth port. By the way, these barrels here, this is what uh, Goldsman was talking about. Look at all these barrels. If you're ever looking for free supplies, Daggertooth is actually one of the best places. It's the only thing that actually makes it any good. I always check these for fireworks though, and I never find any. Talking about fireworks. Oh, actually that could have been one. Nope. Oh hey, look at that. Set that one off as well. Might as well. Bunch of planks. Coral Reef, I like these ones, right on. <laughs> Is that still the same? That's probably still the same uh, book I was talking about last time we were here. I guess loot doesn't really despawn if there's nobody near it. You were right about that. I think this counts as loot. Noteworthy Captain's Logbook. Two million gold earned. Not bad, not bad. Which one is this? Get rid of that thing, man. I want to read the thing. The dusty deck. Not bad. Blazed for XX. 13 million gold earned. That's good. Current voyage? Nope. Sloop. A sloop. Oh well. Well, another run. Another day, another coin. Oh geez, actually now I'm getting uh, getting a little bit of money here from this alliance. This guy felt he had to compete. It's like, ah, you think you got a lot of commodities, I'll show you. It's a lot of treasure chests, that's what those are. Guess I'll just, uh, <laughs> I'll just hang out then. Guess I'll just hang out, wait till he's done. <laughs> kind of a funny in outro. Move my head here. Hahaha. <laughs> Yeah, Captain Dovey says keep selling Alliance member. We'll get that 441k. You're in cahoots with this guy. You got him on the telephone. Keep selling. Raise it. I need to win. Okay, so uh, today is February 15th, 2023. I am, of course, Super Hog Wild. We're here on. Uh, we're here on. Uh, on. Uh, on. Uh, on. Uh, should I just start that again? I guess it doesn't matter. I just timestamp it anyways. We're here on run uh, number 27. I've lost the ability to speak for being out here for 5 hours 50 minutes. Um, my guess is, I mean, I was going to say 405,000 this run. I made, a, I made a couple mistakes. No PvP, though. D 
did uh, two or three runs past, um, two or three ports past what we usually do there, which um, I guess is becoming what we usually do out here on these freestyle runs or whatever. So, so I guess I'll open the book and see what's going on. I clearly have uh, an alliance member here though who's still selling, so I'm gonna just let him sell. I'm gonna be uh, hanging out, shooting out some some fireworks after I check the book, anyways. So. Be lots of time for him to get that done, but um, as for PvP today, yeah, there's no PvP. I sailed up to uh, how many ships? Three ships, I think, and uh, shot some fireworks at them. Good timing for that. And uh, yeah, it was good. It's good times. I saw one guy, made friends with him. He was on the ship for a bit there, and um, and that's about it. That's about it. Check the timestamps for uh, content. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> and, uh, you know, ring that bell if you want to know the exact moment that I upload these videos. It's usually around uh, 4.30, 5.30 Eastern time for what it's worth. Okay. I guess I'll just check it. He's still selling stuff, but I'll just check it. So we're at uh, 12 million gold. 149,000. In uh, seven sinks. Caught another L on Sunday there when I missed that Galleon, Looney Tune style, as it sailed in and absolutely destroyed me with a keg. But, uh, you know, sometimes those things happen. Was on a pretty good run anyways. Eight runs in a row without any problems, so can't complain there. And today we're at the... <laughs> I guess it's because of the Alliance, right? That, oh man, now that's like... It doesn't count, though. Okay, so for anybody who hasn't uh, been watching these... There's this thing where we keep trying to beat 500,000 in a run. I wasn't trying to this time, but it's really close. 487,170. I guess it's because of the uh, the extra gold from the Alliance. So that's great. No complaints there. 15 days at sea, 38 nautical miles sailed. That's all standard. Usually it's 14 and 37, so we're right on track for that. Um, hey, so right on. Good job. Good job. Thanks for everybody who came out to the live stream. Always appreciate the live audience. Um, I don't even have my live viewer count uh, turned on when I'm doing these. So, like, if you're coming and going, I can't even tell if you do want to stop by. The only time I ever know anybody's here is if you do say something in chat. Feel free to say something. Smart or stupid. Doesn't matter. Talk about current events. Talk about literally anything. If you've watched these videos, you'll know. Pretty much isn't uh, any topic under the sun that I haven't, uh, haven't got to, but I mean, obviously there's some things I will not talk about. I'll be straight about it anyway, so don't have to worry about that. Um, doopy doopy doo. Yeah, I don't know. Thanks to everybody who watches this on uh, YouTube. I'm uh, just about over 100 watch hours now, so things are working out. Algorithms working out. And... Yeah, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it, and I'm glad I can bring a little bit of uh, low-intensity entertainment to your lives. I'm trying to do the best I can. Some of these, I know, they're five and a half hours long, so I can't keep them uh, can't keep them banging the whole time. But like I was talking earlier this stream, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna broaden my own horizons to try to find some some first-party sources to get my uh, to get my news and my content and stuff. Because sometimes the mainstream news it dries up. There's not really a lot of things going on. Like right now, things have kind of been kind of been steady for the last few days here. It would be better if I had more show notes before the show, but uh, but we'll see. We'll see how things go, so thanks. Thanks for all that. Really appreciate it. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Helps with the search algorithms, and you know, hey, leave a comment as well. That helps as well. And without any further ado, I'm now going to shoot off the rest of our fireworks. Said it wasn't going to be nighttime, but looks like I've talked the sun down here, so let's see what we got going. Let's uh, see, uh, what do we got going? These simmering waves ones. Maltese, these are Maltese as well. Maybe what I'll do is I'll set off one of the simmering waves and one of the maiden voyage at the same time. That's the one. We got on sundown here. Getting pretty close, anyways. It's funny how there's like not very much nighttime in this game. You do get a commendation for shooting off five uh, fireworks at night, though, which I found out by accident on the community day stream. But hey, it's dark enough. 
Fire in the hole. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was a good idea. Okay, right on. So that was uh, that was a maiden voyage, and uh, I got another one of those shimmering waves. Be able to see which was which. Right on, right on. These coral reef ones are cool. These are one of my favorites. That is so cool. I love that so much. The color scheme on that, that's just rocking. Okay. Gotta shoot off the, uh, these ones here. Call of the Sea. Jewels of the Deep. These ones are nice. I'm actually going to set off two of these at once. Yeah, these ones are so cool, man. It's between those uh those corals of the coral ones and these jewels of the deep, those are probably uh probably my favorite so far. Haven't checked out all the crates yet, so there might be some other shiners in there. I just like the color scheme, the contrast between the three different colors. Okay, Kraken Killer. Uh, let's see, I think these Kraken Killers and these Deep Blue Sea ones are probably the same, just with a, a different, uh, different color scheme. So I'll set off two of these at once. Oh, I thought they both would have had the crackle. Of course, got all of these, uh... These ones with the splash tails. Splash tails and the crab. These crab fireworks. I don't know why this crab one makes me laugh, but... <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. There's just something about that crab, man. It's just like, it's almost like, uh, I don't know. It's like if you shot it at somebody, it's like you're calling them a crab. Reminds me of Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob, I guess. So that's the shark one. That's actually really cool. I like that effect at the end as well. I think that was the Megalodon one. This one's the shark one. Yeah. Almost the same. Doesn't have the little uh, the little ending to it though. Ruby splash tail, everybody's favorite fish, of course. Everybody's favorite fish to ignore. <laughs> That's like that doesn't even look like a ruby splash tail. Looks like a blobfish. It's ridiculous. Let's see what else we got here. Then we got, of course, all these small ones. This lost seafarer firework is just like, uh, it's like the shooting star one. Kind of like a flare, hmm, a little underwhelming. Still, uh, still cool. You mix it in with a lot of, uh, a lot of other ones. Call of the sea. Seen one of these before. It's nice. Could use a little more color though. What's left? Two more of these coral reef ones. Uh, I'll set them both off at the same time. Uh oh. Nope. Looks like I flubbed that. God, it's just so cool. I love that color scheme. Probably better set off one by one, anyways, you know. Too cool. 
And what do we got left here? Kraken killer. Should have probably saved those corals for last. That's still cool though. Just needs, uh, I don't know, a little more oomph. That's it. Lost seafarer. Whatever, get it out of my, get it out of my sight. It's a cool firework, but the thing is, is like when you're shooting them at people, not an ideal firework to pick. I highly recommend uh, getting some of the ones that got some, you know, pizzazz to them, because it scares the pantaloons off them when they explode over their ship. Whereas that uh, seafarer one, it's kind of just like the Roman candle of fireworks. Not going to really do much. And I think that's it. I think that is finally it. But that's good, you know, because uh, all the other times I've done these runs before I started uh, shooting these fireworks off at the end. I always felt like something was missing from the end of the video. There you go. Makes a better outro. So, once again, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for your viewing. Really appreciate that. And uh, once again, happy to bring you a little bit of entertainment there. And um, today is Wednesday, so I take Mondays and Thursdays off. Uh, we'll be taking tomorrow off. I'll be back on Friday, regular time, 9 p.m. Eastern, doing another one of these runs, shooting some more fireworks at people. I'm going to start doing that every run. It's absolutely worth the, the price of the crate. <laughs> Make enough money out here doing this anyways. So, so that's that. And beyond that, you know, I guess that's it. I guess that's it. I guess that's it. It still feels like I'm missing something, but maybe that's what it was. The elixirs, the elixirs were out of uh, out of alignment there. Okay, so now that that's uh, settled up, I'll catch you all on Friday, and farewell for now.